Check, 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 Mike, check. Yeah, we back. We back in the building. My brother, Reboot Radio. What's good, what's good, what's good? Man, chilling, bro. Chilling, bro. Good to see you, man. We was chopping it up earlier, man. But uh, welcome, everybody. Real DJs Matter podcast premiere episode, man. We talk about all things DJ, music, life, you know. We just we just chopping it up. We having to be just in front of y'all while we doing it. You know what I'm saying? Word. Word. How was your weekend, bro? Man, uh, it goes fast, man. Yeah. Three to five million things, man. Fast. ADHD, brother. Right. <laughs> Word. How yeah, about man. you? Shout out to your, your squad winning. You know, uh, I, won't, I won't talk about mine, but uh, shout out to the Niners. Niners. That's all I got to say about football right now. Niners looking good, man. They looking sexy. Yeah. Hell yeah. Shout out to B-Dub. He's a Niners fan as well. Um, D. Cole, Daryl's in the building. Salute, salute, man. Good to see y'all. Um, yeah, man. So, you know, we just want to chop it up, man, with our fellow DJs. We might have some DJs come through uh, as well and chop it up with us, um, like we did last week. And, um, yeah, man. So, uh, yo, have you, um, have you been, uh, do you keep up with, like, it seems like Pioneer... I don't know about rain. It seems like Pioneer, they got something new. Like every other month, like I always see, uh, I forgot that dude's name. He's he always doing a review on like, you know, like the One Piece joints where it's like Rev 7, whatever. Mm-hmm. Like there's always a, like a new controller. Like there's, there's so many controllers out, bro. Like you think it's like, you think they're overdoing it with the controllers? Man, I, I, I say this, man. First, man, shouts to D. Cole, Dow Feld in the building. Salute, family. Man, um, I gotta be, I'm trying not to spend no money, man. So I <laughs> so I try to stay away from that stuff, man. It's like, I, I mean, um, you're right, I, I, but just being like, how much more can you put out there? Right? Right. Like, like the cornerstone to me is what we rock on. <clears throat> Any anything else is you know, it's just it's, it's bells and whistles, right? Yeah, it's bells and whistles. I mean, like to me, it's two turntables and a mic, man. Word, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You got a mixer. I mean, so like for mm-hmm. me, and you you bet you work on my setup. I got the flagship, you know, it ain't no better than what, what I'm rocking on. You know, I got the that's, best mixer they make, I got the best best table they make. So that's may, you know, whatever they put out, you know, only thing I, I would look for now is like a, a one one controller, the pad has got to be motorized. You know what I'm saying for me, and then turntable feel still. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. But but other than that, man, I mean, I've got a. Uh, you know, I mean, I got a Panasonic controller that over over there. I'm looking at it right now. It's got dust on it. You know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. it's like I, there's always going to be something. It don't necessarily mean it's going to be the best thing out there. Like I, I know there's a debate about 
you know, you've got scratch buttons now and you've got all that crap out there. Yeah, now. yeah see, that I don't feel like you press a button and it does a scratch. Mm-hmm. Like, come on, man. Like, we, we're supposed to be doing that. Like, that's, you know, I mean, you know, we're already headed to AI where they're going to have AI DJing. Like, you set the equipment up and leave, come back, get your money. And pick the equipment up because the AI robot gonna do the party for you. Like, yeah, well, I'm I'm afraid there ain't gonna be no come back and pick the equipment up. It's gonna be the <laughs> AI robot, and you know what I'm saying? There ain't gonna be no DJs. That's, mm. you know, I, I see it going that way. You already we live in the playlist world now, anyway. Where the music just come right out the robot. Just, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm, but you know, I I'm just I ain't trying to be a harbinger or nothing. But I'm just saying, you know, I could see it going that direction where I know. Uh, like my dad, I went somewhere with him, and a, he had an AI playlist based on what he listens to. I can't remember what the service was. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think those are. I think before AI, right? Those were like common, like like if you go to like like those streaming sites, Pandora, or whatever, and it it sees what you kind of listen to, and it kind of you know predicts. Okay, since you listen to. Black Moon, here goes a song from Gangstar. You know what I mean? So, and I think that was maybe before AI, but now they're actually creating like a full playlist, right? With just like these are the songs that we think you're gonna listen to. Mm-hmm. What your listening history is. It, it's, it knows you in and out. It's scary. Well, like to me, when you're dealing with that, you you're you're no longer organic right right so like so i i think like let's say me and you you know the way we do our sets Mm -hmm. it's never a curated set right so you don't know what you're gonna play and you don't unless we're doing like a tribute like we know okay we're gonna play all these songs by dayla because it's yeah some type of theme project right 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 so so i mean you take out the like I, I take pride in the fact in my sets that at least you know it doesn't happen all the time. Let's say if I do five sets out of three of those five, somebody's gonna say, "Damn, either I forgot about this song or I hadn't heard this before in a long time." Right. And so depending on your AI, you miss out on that opportunity because your AI sticks to '90s hip hop. It's or pre-programming. 90s. Yeah. So. You don't, yeah. I might go back to you know Count Cool Out or something, and you oh snap, you know. And I'm in there talking about well, what kind of shoes was you rocking? You know, were you wearing Pro Kids? Were you wearing Converse, Chuck Taylors, or whatever back then? Now mm-hmm. we went went completely into early '80s hip hop or some shit you can't Shazam. Yeah, yeah. Or, or exactly. You know, yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's the you know organic process that you know it's going to end up turntablists, right? Traditionalists, you know, they don't like controllers, they don't like any of that. And and they all believe in vinyl, you know. So I'm not gonna mm-hmm. sit in at like you know I believe in vinyl anymore. I'm not against vinyl. I grew up on it, but you know I also carried the shit out of milk cr- milk crates. So I ain't trying to roll like that no more. Hell man. no. Yeah. Well, so. Time I reach for my records is right here in my studio. When if I want to play vinyl, or the laptop leave. crash, I can throw it on while I'm rebooting it. <laughs> But they Pun intended. Leave. Yeah, yeah. They don't Other leave. than that, I ain't lugging no crates outside unless they, yeah. yo, know, you know, we, we, you know, say some promoter hits you up. He's doing some old school event. Yo, I could pay you such and such. You bring two crates. All right. Well, you gotta hit that bank account a little more. Yeah, yeah. Then I'll do something like that. But not no. I ain't, we ain't coming out every week to no spot bringing no records. The records better already be there. <laughs> Yeah, nah, and, and you're right. Me and you talked about that before. We got you got the controller price, and then you got the the razzle dazzle. Mm-hmm. You know, because I told you, and you've been you've been to my studio, so you know. I'm like, when I go to carry this stuff up and down the stairs, man, it's got to be worth my while. Yeah, yeah. Because the speakers itself, like we carrying subwoofers and all that, man, and them techniques. Mm-hmm. You know, they ain't, they ain't light. <laughs> mm-hmm. The cases I put them in ain't light. You know, you and you got to have those cases because. Got to protect no your equipment. Mm-hmm. You can't no ringy dig ass cases. Mm-hmm. No, you're right. I, I you like the you some of that big ass the coffin. You seen it? You seen big, it? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's what I got up in. Like that's lifting what... weights. Yeah, yeah. No, so, I feel shout you, out to Robert Gant, man. Salute. See you over there on YouTube. Thank you, bro. 
It's one of my mods over there on, on my YouTube channel. Right. Yeah, man. And speaking of YouTube, bro, man, we was I was talking to, to you earlier about like the corporations, man, and the record labels, how they still doing artists dirty. You know what I mean? Um, don't matter, you know, what race, you know what I mean? The record industry rule number 4080 affects everybody unless you're, you know, you're the echelon of the echelons, the Beyonce, yeah, Taylor about, Swift, yeah. Hova up there. Everyone else, you know what I mean, are worrying about, am yeah. I going to get jerked? Um, you too, man. Yeah. Go ahead. I think they got jerked too. They just got jerked early. Oh, yeah, yeah. Everyone yeah. got jerked at some time. Yeah, yeah you, you're right. You feed into the beast, yeah. and some folks get a return. Yeah, right. So, reason why I brought up YouTube was because every year around October, September, October, they change their terms of service. Really? And I noticed when they change that, the algorithm changes. I was DJing live two weeks ago, and Usually, if I get the copyright warning, I tell people, yo, come on to Twitch from YouTube, then I shut it down. Robert, he's in the chat. He he knows firsthand. Mm -hmm. This time, I'm DJing. I got a message saying, your stream has been interrupted. Like, they ended it. Like some old Instagram shit. Like, you on Instagram playing copyright? Yeah, they did that. I was like, damn. I finished doing my set on Twitch. I got an email. They gave me a strike to my channel from playing copyrighted music. That shit has never happened before. I'm like, wow, they, they're on some other shit now. So yeah. now I have to change my approach because I don't want to lose my channel that has 70,000 subscribers on it. Mm -hmm. So now I got to just only do these shows or upload my own music content or not stream live. Like I can maybe I can upload music and I might have to erase some things. Mostly the blends I could put up there. It's a work though. Yeah. That's a yeah. lot of work, man, to go through and figure out what you can and what you can't play, man. My yeah. <laughs> and it's it's just crazy, man, because these, these corporations, they billions, especially YouTube, billions of dollars they make off of monetizing your videos, whether your channel is monetized or not. They're monetizing and making money off of it. And they're giving you peanuts and they're regulating what you play. Yeah, you know, let me tell you what was funny. Like, I, so I don't stream on YouTube at all. <clears throat> and and here was what happened with me. When I when I uh started my radio station and you know I was I was so I was broadcasting on all marketplaces, Facebook was letting me get away with more, but YouTube and Instagram was not giving me any love. So because of that, you know, I, I pulled way back. But when when uh, YouTube reached out to me, I responded to them that I'm playing a live set that I broadcast on a radio station and I have um, permission to use the music because I pay royalties. They hit me back with, well, you got to pay royalties for the video. And I'm like, Okay, man, I'm I'm not, you know, yeah. I'm not going around and around with you about that. I'm actually broadcasting right now live on a radio station. You're talking to me about, you know, I'm you know, some type of video royalties for some other shit. I'm like, okay, time for because, the Oh, because you have you're doing video while you're playing the music. That's what they try to say. Yeah, right? well, yeah. So I'm saying all I'm doing is I got a camera in, you know, just like on Twitter. I'm just I'm just playing the set that people are listening to on the station. Right. I'm paying royalties for that music. So right. when, you know, I'm not going to double pay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was like, okay, I'm out. You know, and I just never went back. Um, You know, so I found other places. You know, now I will say this. I know that there are other folks that somehow find a way to get past this and they stream for, you know, extremely large amounts of time. Bro. They pick and choose who they're going to kick in the nuts. You know right now, saying? you they got a old school like 80s or old school 70s channels playing like it's no one DJing it it's just you hear just hear the music mm -hmm. Luther Vandross Teddy and yeah. it's streaming non-stop for hours how they so, get away with that exactly I'm perplexed man so I'm it's like well, I feel I'm like blacklisted for real cause it's like I've seen so much people get away with so much 
and yeah. it just seems like every time it's always something <clears throat> with my channel. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, like I said, it's it's you got the established bigger fish they're gonna look after, right? Because yeah. let's be honest, if you're so and so celebrity, you know, and you've got you're streaming to a thousand people, those commercial breaks they making money on. Facts. So they, they don't want to, you know, but if you're so and so streaming to twenty five, streaming to thirty, they're not they're not eating off of that. So they don't want to keep your show going because they don't care. They won't, you know what I'm saying? Like to me, yeah. it, it should be all one pie. But that's I don't believe that's how they look at it. But I think a lot of this is also attorney driven as well. Yeah. It's just it's it's frustrating because some of these other DJ platforms, like um who was it? Um, Mixcloud. Mm -hmm. Like, they have the license to DJ, so their streams don't get taken down, but they, obviously, they don't have the crowd like YouTube has. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they pay the labels, and then they take a percentage. Only thing is, they charge, like, I have to pay $15 a month to stream on there. Mm -hmm. And it's because they're using a portion of that to pay the labels. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying about what YouTube is, they're making billions a day. You mean to tell me they can't do the same thing? Oh, sure. They can't even cover that? Like, And, not, and I'm not saying it like give it to everyone to stream music. I'm saying DJs. They, they fill out a form, an application. You got to give it, you know, you give them history, you know, it's kind of like a resume, you know, hey, I have my own radio station. Like you said, I have a license to do it. Boom. You know what I mean? And they talking about any Joe Smo that opens a SoundCloud. To me, they easily do that. Why they don't, it's, I, it, it kills me. I don't, I don't know why. It's, it's got to be something. Uh, I don't know either, but like for me, you know, I, personally, I just think it just don't care. It's like, like if you get to a certain spot, then they'll care, you know, but right now it's like, what is the magic number of followers is, you know, what are the magic, magic number of viewers and it's probably viewer driven and not follower driven. You know, like you said, you got 70,000 followers on YouTube, dude, yeah. you, ain't, you ain't somebody to be scoffed at, but you know, yeah, but I, the, the view rate right, exactly. right now, there's four people watching. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, well, so I, I get what you're saying, yeah. but, but that's what I'm getting at. Like, if you got, let's say, a Jazzy Jeff, man, and he's streaming on YouTube, and you got a thousand people in there, they're not stopping that show. Oh no, they, not they have. We going, yeah, man. Shout out to DJ Kurt Nice and Daryl Felder over there on Twitch, man. Salute, Darryl, brothers. Ask what? What do you know? What songs gave you the strike? It, see, this this what it is before. After my stream would be over, and then it would say stream is blocked. I would go in the dashboard. And it'd be a certain song, so mm -hmm. then I would have to delete it out, and then the sh then the the, the mix is open again. Oh, this you. time, it just shut me down, saying I'm playing copyrighted music and gave me a strike. So they're on some new shit right now, well, and that's yeah. why I said I can't even, I yeah, can't risk it, so I can't even strike, stream live so. over there right now. Yeah, because mm -hmm. they they changed their algorithm again, because that's never happened. So. Yeah. So I mean, you know, at some point it's probably gonna happen to Twitch. You I know. know. I mean, I mean know. the reality is, it's you know, the, like the squeeze play. I mean, I know we've talked about. Okay, well then, the, I think the difference with guys like me and you who create, you know, like we we remember when we started doing your version, we were talking about not getting dinged on the algorithms because they don't even know what the hell they're listening to because we manipulate the music so much. Right. So I think we could potentially get around it for a little while, but the, the like the double standard is the problem. It's, you know, like you can't really, you know, do you sue them? Because, I mean, obviously they got big time money, but if you got a 70s music channel that doesn't have a DJ, they just play 70s music that's all copywritten mm -hmm. and not getting digged on it. So what are they doing? Are they giving them a playlist up front? We're going to play this. And then, you know, you say, okay, well, you can't play this. You play that. You, can, you know, like, I mean, is that, I mean, is that where we're at? And is that a possibility? Maybe we submit a list of music and let them tell us what we can, what we can't play. Then you make a mix of that stuff. 
I don't know. I mean, if you know, with these with these with these websites that are getting the uh, mechanical license to stream music, see what happens is with um, Mixcloud. <laughs> They re the reason why they're able to stream because when the this when the when you end the stream, the music's not saved. Mm-hmm. It's gone. Um, I think with Twitch, because they've been able to still do it without any copyright issues, even though in the dashboard it says, you know, you can get three strikes, but I haven't seen anyone get Strikes or other than suspended for playing certain video or mm-hmm. playing some adult content. Mm-hmm. Even that, you your your videos only stay up for a certain amount of time and they get deleted. With YouTube, they stay up forever. So that might be a thing too, because the music is staying up and it's constantly getting streamed. That's I think where that royalty comes in. Where, hey, maybe I'm missing out on money because they're listening to it on YouTube instead of on my spotify or my where my tracks are you know under my account so maybe that's where the youtube thing falls in it. and you're right I, I still i still get flag messages from old mixes on my youtube channel that are still running that i'm not ah, yeah, man, from like two three years ago yeah, i'm like man dude i'm not nah, okay do what you want yo yo shout out to miss cooley miss cooley hey miss cooley miss cooley um you gonna get me an appointment with your dentist I need an appointment with your dentist, man. You know, you got all, all 34 of your teeth in, the, in that smile. I want to make sure mine is there. <laughs> you know. So Ms. Cooley said, can you slightly... <laughs> she got the boxing gloves up. <laughs> <laughs> can you slightly change the tempo? Nah, because now the AI picks up. On You used to... Do, you you're, We were used to able to do that. I know I was, but... The algorithm picks up on that now with the AI too. Like someone made an AI of Kanye's voice singing in the club, 50 Cent, the the just his smash hit. Mm-hmm. But it sounded like Kanye, because they used the AI. Do you know I uploaded it to my YouTube because I want to see what it found when it filtered it? It said copyright 50 Cent in the club. Mm-hmm. And I and I put the acapella up. So it it found because it was digitally altered, it scanned it and found out that it, this was really Fifty Cent. It wasn't Kanye. So it's gonna be even harder even get around doing the blends on put them on YouTube because it's gonna find what it actually the song is. It's gonna yo, separate. While we talking about that AI and the voice thing, man, yo. I, I, now I'm talking about AI for bad, his AI for good. I can't mm-hmm. wait to hear DLC's project. You know, Who? DL, DLC. So I, I saw a thing where DLC is about to use AI technology. Actually, they're they're doing it now. So he is writing a project out. He's going to do the do the verses, and then they're going to use AI. To alter his voice to what it should have sounded like from back in the before the accident. Yes, sir. Exactly. Exactly. I was like, that is that's what I'm talking about. That's what AI was going to be good for. So I'm yeah. super hyped about it. I saw a video about it. He was in the studio, and and you know they were they didn't give us a sample of it, but you know I, I think he's still writing the material. This is like hot off the presses. See, so he's supposed was, to be that dude before Snoop. He was going to. Hey, he was the West Coast. He was. Really, like I mean, the reality is, NDF, NWA broke up, and it was going to be DOC was going to be the man. He was going to be the man. He was still mm-hmm. behind the scenes. He helped shape Snoop. Word. He wrote Dre's lyrics. Mm-hmm. You know. So I mean, you know, let's be honest. After the, you know, Ren and Q were writing all the NWA stuff, and then here comes DOC. The NWA breaks up. You know, now he's writing for Dre. He's coaching Snoop. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, then he gets in his accident, he drops his album and you know, all that stuff. And I mean, rest is history, but yeah, I mean, that's like, in my opinion, you know, the fact that death row signed um, DJ quick. Yeah. A huge move because if it was to me, 
quick was going to be if it would have been for, you know, like Dre, let's be honest, Dre did a lot of stuff, but a lot of things we think Dre made, Dre didn't make. Nah, man. Right? But quick made his stuff. Yeah. So, and people, you know, and me too, like I, I didn't know about quick like that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. What's crazy is this is, this is another positive thing about Twitch and meeting other people. It puts you put you on the path of finding out about other music you normally don't play. When you're around DJs, dope DJs that stretch, they don't, I call it stretching your legs. Yeah. 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 (laughs) And, and, um, just other people too, in general, like my tribe, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's Cooley, St. Louis, Mm -hmm. uh, Dallas, you know what I mean? People on the West coast, they're like, yo, Okay, now I'm gonna I'm right, do a set, South set. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm gonna go to the West Side and I'm playing more quick. Stone yeah. Rock put me, yo, DJ Quicks. I did first time ever. I did a quick tribute for his birthday. I need you know to do I mean? one, man. I, I'm a, I, w- I was always a quick fan. I got deep quick. Then that made me find out all the stuff he produced. Didn't even know. Like, oh shoot, he did that joint. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Miss Louis said, don't tag me to St. Louis, please. <laughs> Girl, please. You almost killed me in St. Louis, Miss Cooley. Don't do yeah. that. <laughs> don't do what? that. Claim St. Louis. <laughs> but uh yeah, man, it is it's dope, man. Just being put on um, you know, just a lot of good music that, like you said, expands your palate and stretches your legs. She said that was Illinois. You almost killed me in Illinois. I'm sorry. (laughs) But, yeah, you're right, Tiger. I I think, um, you know, you got to depend. You got to not depend. You got to figure out what type of DJ you're going to be. Right? Are you going to be somebody that, you know, you you play what's what's like in you or you play in what people telling you to play? Mm -hmm. You know, and I think for you and me, we play what's in us. We play with like I. I, I mean, it's no, we talked about this before we're live. No curated sets. We 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 flip the switch and we just start with a record and we go from there. And the set just grows. You know. Now I know. For, now I know for you and I mean you're probably better at it than me. I'm bad about. I do a lot of stuff live and then I'm like, oh crap, what was that blend? I'm gonna go back and make that into something. I can't remember what the heck it was. You know what I'm saying? And then like I. I struggle to go back and listen so it's a lot of things that i've material that I, I put together that i leave on the table yeah i mean i was doing that with our, our project that we just dropped called mm-hmm. animal kingdom get it right yeah. now get that animal on band camp and animal. um I, I was going through your version sets because i always record a second um your version without the microphone mm-hmm. case i'm gonna use some for band camp. i'm like damn let me go through and I, I pulled a few from there. Then mm-hmm. there's ones that I want to use, but I was like, damn, I could have did that better. So I'm going to wait. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? But um, yeah, man, it's, it's so, so many, so much stuff we do every week. Before we know it, it done, it done got piled up. And then, like you said, it takes you a while to go through it because, you know, but you want to use certain things because this stuff I forgot I did. And sometimes a child will remind me, like, yo, remember when you did that blend? You know, remember when you did that? Like, the two blends that stand out, no, the three blends that stand out right now from the tribe was um, <clears throat> uh, Buster Ron's Fire with Adele um, SOD. Then Miss Cooley had one with uh, Diana Ross and Ludacris, my chick bad. Yo, I was like, yo, this shit is crazy. Like, I, I never would have mixed my chick bad because Nicki Minaj. I really don't play Nicki Minaj. But that blend came out crazy. And then the other one was um, B Dub. I just put that on my band camp. Triumph mixed over Kooji Raps, Ill Street Blues. Nice. And I did that shit live and I had to rewind it live. Like, I was like, Yo, that shit is crazy. So, you know, getting ideas from other people that love music, like expanding my my palette too. Your version expanding my palette a thousandfold, bro. You know, oh, I yeah. will tell you that. 
Yeah, I, I'll say this. I mean, like <laughs> Black Steel, shout to Black Studio. Word. Say, like just because I can do it, don't mean I want to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Reach out to Black Steel. Yeah, shouts to DJ Little Fever, man. This dude comes up with some. Oh my, oh God. my gosh, these crates of bananas. Man. Left the he's left to the left. <laughs> left to the left. Yeah, but but what I will say, man, is it has made that group. I mean, we're a group of gorillas, man. We can handle anything, and we yep. can do it live on the spot. I mean, just it's like I I I, I say it in my set. I say, man, I hear voices. The voices are telling me to go left. Give me a minute. Let me let me quiet this voice, and then we go going yeah. there. I mean, but it, it really has it's like a I mean, zone. Darfell said it, man. Iron sharpens iron, and you say it as well. Max. But I, I mean, like that your mm. version, it, you know this. Uh, you know, that group, they, those dudes are super creative, man. Come on, Luciano Sola? Luciano is nasty. You're nasty. Uh, I mean, it's like, I mean... Jazzy know, Jeff playing his edit. Word. Lord Finesse playing his edits. Kick a free. So I'm like, yo, th- th- you know, that would be my only knock about Twitch. <clears throat> is that I don't, I'm not sure folks know exactly that the reality is a lot and i'm not gonna say all of them but some of these djs are rocking joints that are being made on your version <laughs> you yeah. say it. so why not go to your version and hear the process man but Facts. but but anyway so yeah mm-hmm. i mean i think the having each dj rotate out their packs mm-hmm. and then you, that opens up your palate it opens up you know like i mean oh man i, I never heard this before you know i, I mean or I have acapellas that I didn't use the blend, and then something came up because I, I told you this before. It was um, it was like I can't remember which acapellas it was, but like in those acapella challenges, I've created a project out of it because it was something I didn't use before. Then I was like, okay, I'm gonna blend this with this. I'm like, oh, this is dope. Mm-hmm. Oh shoot, okay, I can do this. And then all of a sudden. I created a project and threw it up on Bandcamp. Yeah. Like you, those are the, like you said, the best ones because it's organic. You don't know where it's coming from until it hits. Then you're like, all of a sudden, the light bulb goes off in your head. And, and that is the great thing about Twitch also is like when you're doing it organic and you're doing it live like that and you're on your version, you get that instant feedback. Yeah. You know, like, you know, like, so, you know, I don't know. I haven't really shared what I do. Like, I hadn't even opened a crate yet, bro. So like I, I usually am if, if I'm making beats like when I have time because I mean you know how my my uh, personal life is, can be hectic so right. when I have time and I'm making beats then yeah I will open the crates but like if I'm just going off the dome a lot of times man I don't have a lot of time I just come in here and I listen to the crate and then I say okay you know what I like this I like this I like this let me go this and you know and and I'm, I'll listen to it and I say ah you know what I don't like that. I this better or whatever and then there's sometimes where i've done sets where i opened the crate when the raid came in and mm-hmm. i said you know what <laughs> we'll go this way i play a couple of my old edits we'll go this way and then um i'll ask the crowd do you like this or do you like that you know what i'm saying right. but i think mm-hmm. you and me coming from old school djs you know mm-hmm. so it's a couple things we know records but more importantly we broke records so we were used to walking into record stores and grabbing 12 inches random artists we never heard from before and play them and then say you know what that's hot or that's whack yeah so you can kind of use that you apply that to when you're making uh, a remix or an edit now is you know oh no that's not cool so i think that serves us better great point you made like knowing the records we were talking earlier, y'all, before we came live about the break beats. It's mm-hmm. like break beats in the middle of the record or the beginning or near the end, as the break beat is there. You know, you've heard the break beats, producers use them in songs or whatever. And that's where, you know, you get your shit off. You, mm-hmm. you cut it up. That's what they did back in the days where the MCs got on. Mm-hmm. But we found that listening to the record more, there might be another part of the record that we can loop. And bring that in. And what's crazy is, yo, you just reminded me. Thank you. I've been meaning to drop 
ultimate breaks and blends. So I've been taking certain break beats that I like, mm-hmm. finding different loops, and putting MCs on it. Oh, nice. And I, it's it's in it's in Bandcamp. I just haven't released it yet because I've been thinking of new ideas every damn week. I do your version, <laughs> so I'm like, damn, I could put that one on there. But I, I I need to drop it real soon. But um, that, that's dope. We you know, like you said, you you pull something else out of a song, a funky ass break, loop that shit up while you coming out of the other song, and then you start it over again. You know what I mean? It's, it's it's dope, and it's I like finding it on the fly. Mm-hmm. You know, well, shouts to uh, DJ Detroit man. Salute on Twitch. Oh, DJ yeah. Detroit man, dope house DJ, bro. I need you next month, the twelfth. Come, yeah. You can have right. my slot. I ain't gonna be here. That's right. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You can have my slot. Sometimes uh, off the dome is best. It shows your skills, Brown Hornet, man. Salute, Dar Felt. I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. I, I just think, you know, uh, breaking records, you know, helps with that. You know, when you, like, and I go I, I go by that. Like, I think nowadays um, this generation is the generation of someone else is mm-hmm. telling them what dope is. And and I mean, when I mean someone else, I mean someone that, kind of in the industry but not like djs broke records when we were growing up when dow fell was growing up when you were growing up when i was growing up djs broke it up hey i'm glad you said that tiger in the in the chat because i i had mad jokes for that comment by miss cooley mad, mad jokes but i was like i better stay away from that i, I just got here i ain't trying to get kicked off the show and- Oh, 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 some of my boob tube. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, I was like, well, it depends on, you know, many things can happen now. You know? Yeah. It depends on what you're working with. You got enough to pay on them or not. But anyway, so, um, oh, but yeah, so I, I think that part has hurt. It's hurt the current music now. You know, and I mean, me and you had a discussion before about, um, you know, pay to play. You know what I'm saying? And and I mean, there's a lot of folks out there that bite on the program directors and all this other stuff. So, you know, people, like I always I challenge my children to demand more of an artist. Mm-hmm. Demand more. Now, yeah. they don't always listen, but yeah. Yeah. Um. Oh, Tachenko. Shout out to Tachenko on YouTube. Loyal fan, man. Always comes through on YouTube and shows love. Salute. <laughs> Down mm-hmm. well, the skillet is on deck. You can't, you can't walk me in the door like this, Daryl. You know that. <laughs> Come on, man. You know I'm destined to be in trouble. That's what I do. Um, the break beats. I mean, I'll upload it to to YouTube, Miss Cooley, but I'm not gonna uh, play it live. Just you know, from what I was talking about earlier on how they don't change the algorithm. But um, I can upload stuff there, and then just if something is blocked, then I can remove it without getting a strike. So it's just a live thing they really they've been uh getting on. Chaka, let me ask, what about the instrumentals? Nah, instrumentals too. They'll um they, they get you on instrumentals as well. Gotcha. You mean if I play them mm-hmm. or just if I upload like, them? What if we just drop three instrumentals on YouTube to see what would happen? But you know what I'm saying? Like let's let's funky drummer. You drop an a cappella funky drummer, right? The world whole world knows what that is. I'm just right. curious would you get a strike on and I mean obviously playing with strikes. Maybe I should do it. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, I think I'll do it. I, if I can remember how to get into my YouTube account, I'll upload the funky drum, drummer now, and let's see what happens. I don't care. About well, that. see the strikes. All right. So to be clear, the strikes for uploading content. If you upload, you take a video from someone else's channel. They'll contact YouTube to give a strike, or the artist. We'll do it. Most most of the time, you upload something. If it's something that's already been screened from the artist that they don't want it on, up on YouTube, on your dashboard, you'll get a, uh, a alert saying that this has been blocked. So you don't get a strike. It just says it's been blocked because this song has been blocked by the... the uh, the copyright holder and it can no and can no longer be played on YouTube. So that's 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 one way of it just 
um, getting blocked, not really getting a strike. Strikes only happen when someone specifically will go to your channel and be like, yo, remove it because that's my content. Now, they can just ask to remove it and not give a strike, but a lot of people do will give a strike because they don't want their content being stolen. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But the, like I said, the live thing, that's something new that they that they did because that's never happened where they gave me a strike for playing copyrighted music because you say you playing it after a while see we see to get around it getting the copyright message we talk a lot on youtube because it messes with the algorithm the song's playing mm-hmm. here's you talking they know that's that's that doesn't sound like the song oh, i got you they using a lot of effects mind. yeah but that was the old ways of doing it like i said the algorithm has got even more stronger they YouTube is using AI now, so now they're saying about when people were using obscure samples. When you're talking about Diddy just you know ripping a whole you know R and B song and putting the drum behind it, talking about like the DJs like Primo and Large Pro using like little bits or like a Dilla. Yo, mm-hmm. the AI now they said is able to find what that one half sample was. And our producers may be liable if some shit comes out. This is told me Pandora's box is open, it's never gonna be closed. Well, I agree. You can't go back now, right? Man, shouts to Cello Music in the on twitch.tv, man. Salute. Yo, Cello, salute, man. You wanna join us, bro? Let me know. I'll whisper you the uh the stream yard link. But um, yeah, man, it's I'm telling you, man, it's 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 getting. I think you know how these things come back around in circles, mm-hmm. like with the streaming and with the AI. I've seen artists like Crooked Eye, um, other artists, not put certain projects on streaming services and buying it direct to consumer. Where where it's a um you know a special um. Uh, pack you know what i mean like a you know a shirt his ep you know what i mean a uh, physical copy out of the trunk mm-hmm. you know because a they're getting 0.00001 for a stream <laughs> you know what i mean mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that way direct consumer you know all the money's going to them just like twitch twitch takes half of the uh subscriptions you know for the 499 we're getting only 250 mm-hmm. um youtube takes 40 percent of donations anybody gets donations like how to get bits at least in bits we get all the bits mm-hmm. they take 40 percent of the donations on youtube gangster man that's why i was always putting my cash app up you know but not a lot of people like use cash app because you know afraid of you know the hacking and all that crazy shit so yeah. I'm actually about to start throwing a QR code up there, man. I got a QR code to, you know, like, I mean, like, let me and you talked about this before. I got a couple things in there. Like, and I'm, we'll have another conversation, man. You know, mm-hmm. me, like, we're going to have to have an off, off camera conversation about some other shit that, you, you know, like, I, I've been jumping off with. But I definitely mm-hmm. think, and, and I'll go back mm-hmm. to our conversation that we had before we went live. I definitely think. Like, like as, as a group, you know, and, and I'm not saying a racial group, but as a group of listeners of, let's say, quality hip hop material, mm-hmm. what we mm-hmm. need to be able to do now to control and take back the narrative of the marketplace is show numbers and support for the people who are pushing the type of music that we want to hear. Right. And I think that's what's missing right now. Mm-hmm. You know, you're on the fence. You've got some people that will actually participate in mumble rap but don't really like it that much. But because so and so may listen to it, some they listen to it too. Or artists we mess with, they'll yeah. they mess with that because they want to stay relevant or just yeah. start getting the bag, no matter if the, the shit is trash. Yeah, and that and that's my argument. When you say stay relevant, re- relevant means you put out good material. You want to stay relevant, right. put out good material. No, don't, yeah. don't rock with some clown. You got good material. You'll yeah. stay relevant. Yeah, that's how, yeah, you're right. That's how they look at it. But that's how, no, 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 how you said it. it. 
I'm completely with you. But yeah, that's how they that's that's what their mindset is. Well, you know, yep. I mean I necessarily agree with this mumble dude, but I'm gonna put it on it because he's got heat. Yeah. And the reality is now he doesn't have heat because nobody's coming to see him in concert. You microwave ass music. Concert. Yeah. Well, the, look at what look at what Wu Tang showed us. You know, what look at what Force Tour showed us. Mm -hmm. our, our culture ain't going nowhere. Word you up. Know, we, we're here and mm -hmm. we will go to see our people. Facts. But, but, you know, it's just the reality is that the artists, and, I, and I'm hoping the fallout from Force and the fallout from Wu Tang is that you, you see that, man, guess what? Yeah, we grew up on this music and it was 90s and it was great, but it ain't gone and it don't even have to be 90s no more. That sound was a sound in a time, but we yep. just take the, the sound now and it doesn't That's have to relevant, be. like you said. Exactly. It doesn't have to be. 30 years and they still sold, selling out. They're still selling out, man. So I think, like, you know, we, we just got to be careful about the vehicle that we put our numbers behind now. If right. that makes sense. The vehicle that we put our numbers behind. You know, I would say, you know, and man, this is going to sound bad, because, but it's the truth. I'm going to say support a full blast radio. I'm going to say support a reboot radio. Support a digital analog radio. Support some of these folks that are doing the, holding the torch, you know, and trying to do it the right way. You know, I mean, I, I, I probably hadn't told you this. I, I had a conversation with another DJ about it, but I get new music to the station, you know, at least once a week now. Mm -hmm. Right. So I attribute that to growth. So I'm getting new music. So now I'm starting to tell these artists, you know, they sending me the, the, you know, the grimy street drug sale, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, okay, I got you. Now send me a track that's good for the street. Yeah, not the exploitive of the street. Yeah, yeah. It's the one that's about. Send me, send me something that you think is going to help you get on. Mm -hmm. Now send me something that's good. You know, and I'm just saying, now send me something good for the street is what I'm saying. So that's my response. And here's what happens. If they send me something that's good, then I'll rock them both. That's balance. I'm good with balance. Mm -hmm. If you, you don't send me anything, you you know, then I don't play it. Right. Plans blank. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, Kurt Knight was saying he's corporate greed. These corporations have just gotten greedy and greedy. Now, we was talking about that earlier about, you know, corporations and saying about, like, you know, you make a good point. Like, what, what big corporation out there is really for the hip-hop culture? Not rap, not, you know, what, you know, is commercialized and over-gangstified and over-sexualized. The hip hop culture. What big corporation is really for that? There is not one. So, you know, we I was talking about, you know, how you know some of these big dudes in hip hop can start a corporation and have it to where that can be, you know, a sponsor because you know, they've been in the hip hop culture. Mm -hmm. And then um you know, so we, you know, we were talking about that. Um, I mean, do you agree like there's, um, like, I mean, they, I mean, look, look, there's always been corporations like, I mean, Adidas, Run DMC, you know, Nike, you know what I mean? You had Air, you know, but then, you know, then, you know, that's hip hop, you know, Timberland, Boots, you know, not necessarily... They weren't created for hip hop culture, but we we made it hip to rock it. So it's kind of like we 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 made it cool, you know. That was a dope thing about hip hop. Like we made shit cool. Um, do you think that um, those corporations owe it to do something? for the community because of the billions that we've generated for them or do they do they not have to like like where do you where, where do you think like you stand on like something like that like yeah so I, i'll say this because of you know my ventures in in my uh my other life you mm -hmm. know there's something called business ethics right and business business ethics are cutthroat, gangster, grimy, mm -hmm. and that's why they do what they do to these artists. Yeah, it's business ethics. It's no, it's no, it's no like 
moral compass like this is the you know like i, I you know I've, I've done the you know i they don't it, it, i didn't do anything wrong you know this is a jerk contract you signed a jerk contract to get in the door you know what i'm saying it's almost a given right so yeah. what i what i think is sure it would be it would be nice but those folks are where they are because of these type of decisions if that makes sense, like they don't, they don't necessarily, you know, they, they, they get behind who's hot, and 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 that's where the, what they want to sponsor. Like, like let's say, like your meetup, you got a meetup coming up soon, right? And I, and I just did a meetup. Those meetups will get sponsorships, large sponsorships, when their numbers grow, right? Right. So like we'll use like uh, Rock the Bells just did a cruise. Yeah, you know, I don't have no problems getting no sponsors. You know why? Because LL don't need he, he don't want LL thinking I don't want to spend my money. So y'all sponsor me. Yeah, they gonna do it. They gonna do it no problem. No know. problem. It's LL legend. Yep. Legend, and his whole cruise is loaded with legends. Mm -hmm. Like so, like win 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 win. And so yeah. let's just say, even if those companies do have some type of moral compass and they feel like by sponsoring Rock the Bells, they gave back. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Whereas, right. you know, like, I mean, I, I, it, obviously you can't hate and you can, certainly can't say LL didn't, you know, do anything for the culture, right? Facts. So, but, you know, like, so where do we, you know, where do we open the doors for folks that are trying to, you know, help push it? Like, I, I, and I don't want to say push it. I just, I just want balance. Yeah. Balance, is, we've lost balance. In the 90s, we had balance. You had NWA. You could have had NWA in the same concert as KRS One, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. and 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 maybe uh, um, Tribe, two, two Live Crew, you know what I'm saying. You could have had all, you could have, you know, Two Live Crew, uh, uh, um, NWA, and KRS One all on the same. And I'm sitting there thinking, I think I saw a tour in the '80s that was Ice. That's I can't remember the name of it now, but I think it was, it was Ice T. It was KR. It was BDP then, and uh, there was a bunch of acts. And someone came out in a car on stage. I can't remember now. I'm old now. So, but then anyway, it might have been Ice T. I think we drove out in like a looked like a '64 Impala and the, the colors because that kind of colors was hot back then. Mm -hmm. right? But but so my point mm -hmm. is that you know when you're you're trying to get folks to get behind something. You know these businesses, those large corporations, numbers, numbers is all that matters to them. Numbers, right. will, LL Cool J is going to bring numbers. You know, like you know, if if I want to get support for my venue, then I need social media to get behind me. So when I go to sit down at the table to talk to these folks, they understand numbers. They don't understand what I'm saying. They understand well how many. Like you got seventy thousand followers on YouTube. That's numbers they understand. Right. Numbers they understand. So that's right. kind of how it works. No moral compass, is, you know, <laughs> in business ethics, it's no more compass. True. That's true. Um, Yeah, I don't want to play any clips right now, Cooley, because uh, I'm on YouTube as well right now. Um, So, but uh, hopefully we'll be able to. See, a lot of shows do that, though. Um, They have commentary, they'll play a clip, and then they'll talk about it. So, um. <clears throat> That people that do that get away with not having strikes because you're actually not stealing the content, but you're creating commentary around the content. You know, you're not just ripping it, putting it up, and then that's it. You know, you put it up, talk about it, you know. But then again, you have to make sure that the content you're getting, they're allowed for them to do that. You know, um, I saw one dude that said, uh, yeah, I see a lot of people out there, you know, have my little clips, content. I ain't said nothing, but uh, I, I got the lawyer ready, though. Going to be a lot of channels <laughs> taking down. I was like, oh, shit, see? And they were doing the same thing. So, Still yeah, rock. so rock, salute. That fair use yeah. is sticky, man, on, on, on uh, YouTube. Oh. Shout out to DJ MJ2. And uh, he said he just got back from the Rock the Bell cruise and the ship was packed. Which is my point, like the coach you know, ain't going nowhere. Ain't well, going nowhere. And so when you when you mm -hmm. um, talk about 
these mumble rap dudes, they're not like we're we're positioning ourselves to potentially get control of the narrative like we used to have it before we put it on the whole stroll. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. I hope like what we've learned are like we're older now. To me, we see what's happened. You know what I'm saying? Like we, we see what's happened when we 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 kind of sold out the quality of the music. You know, and I know right. that kind of sounds crazy, but you know that, that's what I believe. So to me, maybe we can help shape where it should be going now. And especially like with the contracts, <clears throat> like think about Dela you know, just got their masters back. I mean, a lot of these artists probably got their masters back, so they're in full control of their catalog, and they might be even reaping the benefits better now because, A, more people are seeing them. The younger people <clears throat> that didn't know them now know them even more because of all the talk about them being selling out the stadiums, mm-hmm. um, and um, the whether they're at the, the shows with them, BET or Grammys and all that, um, th- I think that will help them tre- tremendously too. And sure. um, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Like I was saying before about Nas, you know, starting that foundation for MCs that didn't get they just do, didn't get health insurance, um, they just. Um, the first two recipients were Scarface and Rakim. Yeah, I saw that. Man, no. Shout out to J One Son in the building, man. Salute. Oh, salute. salute! Another beast. Word. Beast on decks, man. Man, I mean, uh, Selector was talking by him earlier. He's like, "Yo, that dude, man, be slicing so damn fast." Hey. I'm like, bro, <laughs> I be trying. It. I be trying it too. Like, hey, J One is like water. I, I asked him, man. Nothing. Yo, man, how you doing? He said, man, you got to be like water. You got to be like water. water. Like Bruce Lee. Cool to the other <laughs> side of pillow, man. Cool to the other side of pillow. Water. But, but water. Um, you know, I, I, I'll say this also, man, and you know. So the reality is when you put out music, you put out music for the record label, you tour to make money, mm-hmm. right? So I think. <laughs> Unless you're in a 360. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 now here's a different dynamic like I, I like i'm curious if you can get if you can get the artist organized enough because let's be i was the other like we were talking about title right we were talking about my you know like i, I said something in my stream the other day and i think i hurt some people's feelings about title but if you're a dj out here doing shows in real life environments you can't be fucking with title tiger can we curse on your show <laughs> Hell yeah! Okay, well, we can do that. Right. <laughs> like strike two. Like, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> but I'm like, okay, so, so yeah, you can't be fucking with title because you could be at a gig and the Wi-Fi sucks. Now, what? now, uh-huh. what? what you gonna do now? If you if you base your your library and you got a good percentage of your stuff on title, then you about to have your ass out there flapping in the breeze, champ. So no right. DJ that's been out here on the hustle is really rocking with title like that. So I made a comment about, yeah, this ain't title. My crates is real. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I, what I also said was that you have to understand these streaming services are not paying these artists right, which goes back to what me and you was talking about before. These was, You on a streaming service, you hear Snoop Dogg, you hear them all talking about, they don't even understand how to get paid on these streaming services. I'm about to pull up the... um. As you were talking, I, I was just Googling which streaming service pays the best. Say it, J1. J1 said, yeah, the cloud is just sketchy. It is. You can't You can't be going to any gig. I use, I use, and I have title. I use it for some mm-hmm. obscure request that I may not have. Right. But other than that, mm-hmm. I got a 10 terabyte drive full of music, man. So check out this. This, this is from... Statistica, Statista charts, music streaming, who pays the best? These are gross payouts to labels per stream by selected streaming surface services. So you got YouTube at the bottom of the barrel paying 0.00074. So that's so if Miss Cooley plays one of my tracks that I have on YouTube that I own, I get. 
0.00074 per stream. Pandora plays 0.00134. Spotify 00397. Google 00611. To put it in layman's terms, these are all less than a penny. Yes. And look, title. Now it's Xbox Music. I didn't know you could put your stuff on Xbox Music. That's crazy. Xbox Music pays more than all of them. But as far as the the, the big streaming services, which title Spotify, Apple Music, and YouTube, title is paying more. Yet they were talking shit about Jay Z. But you're still getting jerked. Zero point one two eight four per stream, bro. That. Yeah. It's disgusting. <clears throat> it's disgusting. It's 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 a new it's the new slave um uh record labels. It's even yeah. worse. You ask me. <clears throat> You're hundred percent correct, man. It's even worse. Yeah, and, and I and so and that was my other yeah. argument was I was saying that you know, you know, why not just go on and just do the music, man? Buy the music. You know? So yeah. So, like, I mean, you know, I, it, it just is what it is with some of this stuff. But, but at any rate, um, it's, yeah, it's so I, like, I know some people's ass was a little chapped by that comment, but, you know. Nah, man, that's that's the real. I try no. to keep it that way. <laughs> <laughs> that's the real. But it is. No, to me, if you in here, if you go into a gig and you count on title, or you accident waiting to happen. Accident waiting to happen. You, to me, you have hadn't been DJing for a long time either. That's a dead giveaway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. To, to see, you know, yeah, to see the change, see how it went, like <clears throat> it's almost like it got better, <clears throat> but nothing still changed. You know, the technology changed, but everything stayed the same. <clears throat> Yeah, so I mean, I think you know, look, looking at uh, people selling out tours, you know, talking about primarily playing '90s music. You know, I'm I'm curious to see what next year holds for us, because LL man, shouts to LL Cool J and Rock the Bells Radio, man. I mean, you know, they they got he did it right. He got celebrities behind him. He called in his boys. He was part of the culture. He's in the culture. He helped shape the culture. Mm-hmm. He didn't forget the culture and he came back to the culture to try to help do something about what's going on in the culture. Yeah. Now what, what's up with next year? As what's next? Get stuff to, yeah, what's next? Yeah. You know, do, do these young boys realize, okay, well, damn, maybe we need to stop all that mm-hmm. auto-tune BS, man, and get our shit together, you know, because some of them do have bars. Some of them do, but you know, I think some of them like, and I, I'm only, you know, I'm like, eh, I probably shouldn't say this, but so I know, like, let's say with my kid, one of my oldest kid, you know, but, you know, you, you, your mind can be impressionable. You know, I'm trying to tell him, don't, rap, don't let your rap style be like, say X Y Z. Let your rap style be your rap style, something different. Nowadays, that's not what these folks hear. Everybody's auto tuned, singing on the hook, yada yada, yada mumble, 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 yeah, 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 all that crap. And then you know they, they think they it. they think they got everything because they see them at these award shows. They see them, you know, in these videos. They they think that's what they got to do. They think they got to be a clone instead of being who they are. You see that dude, um, D one. They talked about he wanted Meek, Rick, and Jim Jones to step up with the music because what they're rapping about is what is not what they do anymore. And he wanted them, you know, he wanted like rappers that keep talking about drugs and killing to have some type of accountability, especially the older ones that are not even in that lifestyle. You know, do you know what's the name was on Sway? Talking on spicy, like, yeah, this dude with this bucket head and, you know, you know, you, you just trying to get clout. He's like, you know, and one of my, you know, I ain't going to say I'm doing, I'm going to do something, but, you know, one of my boys may not like what you said. And then, you know, if they see you, you know, I'm like, really, nigga? You almost 50, still talking about you want to do something to another rapper because he had an opinion on your music. Like, 
This corny fake thug shit, bro. It's like this shit is so tiring, bro. Like for them to have that response to what he said, like he didn't even he wasn't even disrespectful about it. I bring turkeys to the hood, nigga. What you do? That's that was the response, bro. I was just like, all right. But you know, hey, that's that broke wheel. That's how we got there. So we're not trying to grow. You know, it's the broke wheel. That's how we got there. So yeah, you know, it's, it's not. I'm with you. I'm just saying it's I, like moments like that, Tiger. I say, let my people go. <laughs> yeah. I say, let my people go, man. Like the, the wheel has got our people so trapped up under, man. Let our people go. They think the only way they can get out the hood, that's what I'm saying about balance. That's what I'm, I'm saying about balance. In the 90s, there was more than one way, more than one message, more than one voice that you could find if you wanted to be an artist and wanted to get out. It was okay to express yourself and be different. The people that were different were rewarded and they got signed. Now, unfortunately, a lot of them signed a jerk contract, but they got out. Yeah, at least they were, they were most as mainstream as the regular commercial rap was mainstream. Like, all of it was mainstream. Like, mainstream wasn't corny radio rap it was dope music mm-hmm. but you know but we know there was a shift with everything you know mm-hmm. radio corporations takeovers you know what i mean it, it was a lot that had to do with that also um you know it was you know i mean you know hip-hop started because it was a it was a um you know a message to the corporates that you don't see us so we're gonna you know invent our own Instead of us fighting the gangs, because it was it was it was in the streets too. It wasn't mm-hmm. like the streets just started in the nineties, but they battled it out by rapping against each other and breakdancing. You know, but you know, the the, the taste of uh money can corrupt a lot, you know, given the chance, you know. But um at the same time is is gave Thousands, tens of thousands of us, of us, uh, careers and jobs too. So, like you said, there's the, there's the yin and yang to everything. Yeah, I, I just want the balance back. I just think I'm not saying you can't. If if your reality is Griselda, right? If that's your reality, I acknowledge it. But that's right. not everyone's reality. Facts. And we need to have that that other reality out there. People can make a choice, but like when you think. Like I said, I got people sending me music. I don't, there's only one artist, and I wish I would have wrote his name down. There's one artist out of Detroit that the only thing he sent me was positive. And, and, he, and what he talked about, and I play it, it's still in rotation on my station. He talked about how in Detroit, he was a rapper, he's a rapper from Detroit, and he talked about how they did the housing market for urban, the urban community, how bad they did them. And I've heard, I've read about that as well, you know, when the, uh, the manufacturing plants shut down. You know what I'm saying? How mm. how bad that like right now you can get houses over there super, super, super cheap and they're all in, in minority communities. So he talked about that. So yeah, I, I still mm. run it. I, that song ain't going nowhere. You know what oh. I'm saying? And I wish that I can help that dude blow up more. You know what I'm saying? But let's be, I don't know what you get sent to your station, but most of the stuff I get sent to is just talking about weed and they're talking about guns and, you know, and killing. Yeah. So like, you know, when I, when we do Underground Railroad, I play some of that stuff because, you know, I mean, I'm not, I, I listen to everything. I'm just saying, I grew up in the 90s. We had balance. We need balance. It's good for us. Mm-hmm. And that's the, that, and that's the thing I use for, you know, I hear the excuse about, man, y'all listen to, uh, you know, hardcore rap back then too. Y'all had, you know, MOP and, and they were, you know, talking like that. You know, they trying to, you know, when we bring up, you know, the drill music, you know, these dudes. Mm-hmm. And I said, yo, if you think about it, a lot of the rappers from back then were talking about experiences on what they saw. Mm-hmm. You moon niggas is out here killing each other and decide to make a record about it mm-hmm. and call yourself a rapper. It's mm-hmm. a big difference, but big difference. Get, they get pulled. We all get pulled. You know, stereotype. Just like all black people ain't the same, but hey, tell try to tell the racist cop that we get pulled into the yeah, same sphere. All black then, <laughs> yeah. you know. So 
you know, that's the argument I I I, I would use when they when they try to come with that. You know, I listen to MOP. Yo, I we play Annie up on a Friday night drinking. Do you think after I'm done with my set, I'm gonna go outside and and try to set it on somebody? No, my mind's staying like that. The people's minds that were already like that before the music. The music just inundate them to do to do it even more. Like what you say? That kill music. Yeah. Uh, shouts to J One Son. He said hip hop used to go against the grain, then it became the grain. Mm-hmm. And now it just goes with the green. green. It's trends. Yeah. Trends. Yeah. Now, Instead of setting the trend. It's, yeah. It used to set the trend. Now we're letting, and that's what I was talking about earlier. We're letting program directors who's getting paid music, getting paid to play certain music. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, and I'm just keeping it a buck. I, Which I, is illegal. Payola is illegal. Well, like that's a me, federal crime. Let me tell you what, let me tell you what has happened with me then. I don't know what, you know, and I'm, a good thing for me, I don't accept it, but you know, they call it um promo pack. I got asked what was oh. my promo pack. Yeah. Right? So yeah, you know, I'm like, so what is a, what exactly you mean by what is my promo pack? You know, okay, well, how much will you charge me to play XYZ? And this is from managers reaching out to the station. I'm like, you send it to me. If it's dope, I'm gonna play it. If if it's whack, I'm not playing it. It's that simple. But that's kind of like the feeler, right? That's how they're mm-hmm. trying to feel me out. So, God, J One Son is on it, man. Word. That's true. Ninety nine, the nineties was gangsters trying to, to become rappers. Now people starting to rap to, to become Come gangsters. Yeah. And, and really, they ain't even that. They just they, they ain't even real gangsters. Nowhere they near. Pat it up. You know, they think like tats don't make you hard, B. I, you know what I'm saying? I got no tats, but step in, the, step in the studio with me. You know what All I'm right. saying? I got no tats, but I'm a certified grown man. So it ain't about that. But you get right. caught up in trends and get caught up in all other stuff. So you are 100% correct, man. I, I just think right now we got to get off the... We got where hamsters on the wheel and we got to get off the wheel. I think the first step was actually watching what um, the, the Force Tour and what um, Wu-Tang just did. <clears throat> Because that's what they understand. They understand money. They understand money and numbers. Mm-hmm. You know, we definitely have both of them things. Right. So uh, our culture, our age group, we're you know a lot of us. We got kids that are grown. We can go on tour now. We can go on. We can go to do these things. So we'll spend some money now. You know. I'm just looking up um, the live Live Nation uh, owners. Um, I think Live Nation. <clears throat> Is the uh is the uh company that uh that did the New York State of Mind? Mm, gotcha. Um. So while you're doing that, let me ask you this then. Mm-hmm. So, Tiger, um, I can curse on your stream, right? Oh yeah, yeah. You know, but you you know the certain words because of the certain can groups who get you banned. So, <laughs> can I drink on your stream, sir? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, good. that bourbon. Come on, man. Okay, we're Word good, up. man. I'm in, the, I'm in the right place. I like this stream. <laughs> hey, y'all make sure you follow in this stream. Y'all, do, hey, y'all go back and tell some people about this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Power 800, salute. Yeah, we- Wise in the building. Wise, good to see you. Stub said, shots redeemed. Let's go. But yeah, so, you know, I, I, I think when you talked about big corporations, you know, like, I mean, that's it would be nice if they picked a project every year. You know, like what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Like they, let's say, like Pepsi picked the project. Okay, look, man, we're going to. So yeah, we're rolling with the big folks, but we're also looking at a smaller venue that we want to try to get behind and help grow on a local level. That would be great, right? You know, but. I would say, I, I, man, this boy, I'm, I'm probably gonna get in trouble for this. But I would say, forget the big corporations. We need, like, like the celebrity themselves to do that. Hmm. Forget the corporation. Like you bring the minute you like, if LL came in and got behind full, ba- full blast radio, then you're gonna get big sponsors. 
But he gonna do that because he got his own radio station. <laughs> I understand. I understand. I you understand. know what I mean? He gonna be hey, like, but even with that, why can't we have what, what? Why can't we have collaboration? Exactly. Exactly. Why, why not in partnership right. with Full Blast Radio? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yep. do like I said it. I'll say it on here. Because if we thought thing. like that, we wouldn't be collaborating. Yeah, we both that, it, it, it's, that's what I'm saying. I've said it a million times. You're good for the culture. I'm good for drinking liquor and getting in trouble. We all got <laughs> what we do. You know what I'm saying? We all got what we do, you know? But the point is that I'm ne- you live the culture. J1 Son lives the culture. I live the culture, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying I That's- don't, but but it's just that, you know, I mean, everybody's got, yeah, I happen to be a pretty decent DJ as well. You know, I make beats and all that stuff. So I, I love the culture. I'm never going to let it go. You know, like when we were on the interview with um, Tweak Music Tips, Mm-hmm. And we were talking about was there ever a time when you were going to stop because no one was on with me on Twitch? Like, no, oh, that never came in my mind. Was I gonna quit? Oh, I be a DJ playing music when my hands is twist up with arthritis. For real. <laughs> and yeah, you know, I I'll still be trying to work that thing, you know, because I I had a period in my life where I couldn't DJ, and it was like a part of me was gone. Mm. Now I got that part back. I ain't never letting that part go again. Hell no. You no, know, I did That's what I it. had to do. I had five kids. I raised them all up. I did it right. But I ain't never letting that go. This shit will go again. And it don't matter. I don't give a damn if I got a beard is grayed out, man. And I come on there with a cane. I mean, with a cane. It is what it is. But you, you know, like I'm loving that our age group is growing with us. Yo, real quick, Miss Cooley. I didn't realize she redeemed. Uh. Points for me to take a shot. <laughs> hey, she always do it. You lucky. You, you lucky because I'm trying to get rid of this slight little cold, and that, that'll help. So I'll go. I'll go get. I'll go get my liquor in a few minutes. All right. Damn it. <laughs> she always had to redeem some shots. Not on Friday. <laughs> Look, I work from home. <laughs> But no, nah, that's 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 real talk, man. Um, yeah, I was saying that too, you know, about when he asked, you know, that question, like, yo, you know, this was, you know, this has been dope being on Twitch, but it was, it came after YouTube and before YouTube, 20, 30 years of doing what we do, you know, so it's just another stepping stone. So she said, I'll be waiting. <laughs> If I want, <laughs> if I wanted to quit, you know, I'd have quit, you know, during when I was um, DJing in the hood, and shots rang out, you know, and I held the record because I didn't want to lose the mix. You Yo, know what I mean? That's like a conversation me and you talked about before. So you, if you're old school DJ, you had to deal with that, man. They was out there putting caps in motherfuckers' ass left and right, and you like. Only thing you worrying about is your records. My equipment. Your equipment. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's like, because you know somebody going to try to get you in the computer. Please hit your target. Don't shoot my speaker, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, oh, my gosh, man. Uh, like, yo, I, I like the things that we endured, the DJ back then, man. I, I Man, come on. I look at it now like, yo, what the? F-? You know, because Bulls ain't got no names, bro. No, they ain't got no. I mean, dude, I've seen. I mean, and I like it, it was part of the atmosphere. Like in the in the like DJing in the eighties and the early nineties, you knew, man. I just hope these knuckleheads don't show up tonight, man. Yeah, man. You, know, you know, it's like yo, but but you're gonna do, you're gonna do the venue. So I mean, you know, I'm is what it is. But yeah, I've seen a lot of shit back in the day, man. God. I remember, I, I just remember three off the top that happened like within, you know, a few feet of me. You know, I was DJing in a booth on Long Island at the spot. And I'm looking, you know how the booths are up and they have the window, but it wasn't a window because it was, it was, it was open. And I saw the door open, this dude run in. And all I'm saying is a hand like this with the gun. I see the flash. Blah, blah. I'm like, all right, let me get out of here because when the police come, they ain't going to let nobody leave. Yeah, yeah. That happened to be at another spot at this at this bar. New Year's. He want to go.
go outside after it's over, shooting up in the air. I'm packing up trying to go. Police come. Bro, I was there till 8 in the morning. They wouldn't let nobody leave because they want to do their investigation. investigation. Yeah. Like, yo, man, like, the shit we did, man, being at these hole-in-the-wall spots oh. because of the music. Yo, I'm going to tell you. So I know Brother Dragon. I wish Brother Dragon. Brother Dragon, you in here? So, you know, Brother Dragon is my cousin, man. So he know, like, from back in the day. I was doing these parties for this karate school, man. I'm not going to. You know, I don't want to get sued, so I ain't going to name all kinds all right. of <laughs> But I was doing this parties on Friday nights at, for, to raise money for the karate school, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we agreed on a price, and uh, the party took off. Like, it was like the, every Friday was, so it started to be like the spot, right? Because it was in a shopping center, and the shopping center was closed, you know, like, when you know, so it was the only, it had plenty of parking. And so we started having cats coming from different cities to come to this party. Mm -hmm. And and they weren't ready for how fast it grew. Mm -hmm. So they had, and like, I'm going to keep it short, but like they had, you remember the old money boxes? Like the money, like it was like a little box about this big and you open it up and it had a little slots where you put the different bills in. Oh, yeah, yeah. Key mm -hmm. on the top, like a, like a thing for a key. Mm-hmm. So they would like, they had a table at the entrance and the money box was right there sitting on the table and they had, now mind you now, these folks, they all karate dudes. They all black belts. Mm -hmm. These dudes were in the Junior Olympics and all of that for karate. Right. I mean, we talk about legit. <laughs> and uh, my setup was against the back of the, like, like where they did all of their practice was like up against that wall. And then there was a door to go to the, like, like the back, like, and then outside. So, like this particular night, some cow, I don't know where it was from or whatever, but like with that money box, somebody smacked that shit to the ground. And when that box hit the ground, it was on. It was like pandemonium, man. You know how, yeah, you know how we do. So Cass is out there grabbing money. And the next thing I know, it's like, yo, like like the the two dudes that was the nicest. They ran inside and came out with them damn big long ass sticks. And this <laughs> shit was like Kung Fu theater out there, man. They was chopping <laughs> off on the left and right with those sticks, man. This shit was wild. And, and the Get your was, ass. <laughs> because I'm DJing. So my back's up against the wall. And you know, like in a shopping center, the whole front is glass. So it's like I'm watching Kung Fu theater, man. These I mean, these fuckers is kicking the shit out of people, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yo, this shit is wild, man. <laughs> like, hey, man, I swear, of, like, if, if, if I had, if this was during this time when you got camera phones, mm. oh, man, yo, I mean, them dudes, it was like, Tiger uppercut. <laughs> yo, but yeah, yeah, no doubt. And, I, and matter of fact, I think Brother Dragon was taking, he, I think he was a student at that school. I, I, I went out of calling, man. Yo, get in this chat. Let me call this motherfucker. Let him tell oh. him, man. But yo, it was crazy. It was like, like, I mean, like, mad dudes got hit, chopped with them sticks, man. With them, I don't know what they call them. They, I mean, you know, the long shit where they be spinning in the air and all that. Hell stuff. yeah. Oh, they was, yo, it was Kung Fu Theater on, out there, man. <laughs> folks, folks was getting broke off proper. Yo, know, that shit, seeing man. that while I'm DJing, oh, bro, I'd have been bugging out. Were, and the funny part is back then, and so you, like, you probably was like me. When I did a set, you know, I had like a, I had a realistic dual cassette player. So, you know, like I was actually recording because I hustled the mixtapes later. You know what I'm saying? So like, a, like that joint, whatever was nice, I had, you know, okay, well, yo, this is the joint from the last Friday night. So I would flip those and then we'll hustle them. And um, like, I couldn't hustle that one because I was like on the microphone, like, yo, 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 what y'all doing, yo, man? Yo. And, you know, like me yelling, you know what I'm saying, man? This cast is wild and everything, you know shit. So it was like I, I, when I went back and I listened to that uh, tape, man, it was hilarious. Yo, shot if anybody, if anybody's got any of those tapes, man, hit me up. I'd like to have one. <laughs> well, I said Brother Dragon was doing wild Bruce Lee karate kicks. He thought he was Bruce Leroy. <laughs> Yo, hey, hey, run up on Brother Dragon with that shit if you want, though. Word. <laughs> Don't take an L. <laughs> <laughs> I kept doing that shit for a long time. That's what's up. Yeah. Yo, so I want to go. I got to go get my shot.
because I know Miss Cooley won't stop reminding me. So, and uh, while I do that, I'm going to play this two-minute clip. So, obviously, y'all heard about Andre 3000's uh, <clears throat> Blue Sun album, right? Uh-huh. No rapping, no beats. He's playing a flute along different music. So, at first, it came out, I'm like, like, word? Like, damn, bro, this is what you're doing? Then I was like, yo, you know what? Let me let me take a listen. Let me not be like, this is mumble rap. You know what I mean? Just not mm-hmm. bother listen. Bro, it's mad, nice, smooth, laid back. Like, if he was just chilling. You can't think if it's hip hop. Because it's not. Because he's not rapping. It's not beats. He's, he's playing a flute and there's, like, music in the background. And... I've been seeing a lot of people saying, oh, man, I can't wait to see what beat makers do. And even DBRC texted me. He was like, yo, man, I know you make beats. He goes, you know, maybe you should listen to some of them and maybe you should make a beat out of it. I was like, yeah, you know what? So two days ago, I was listening. I'm like, damn, I couldn't really feel because I was still in that mind state of like it's supposed to be hip hop. Today, I sat here after I finished doing our, our, our mix, uploaded that. Matter of fact, go get that, the Animal Kingdom on Bandcamp. I'll put the link in the chat. And I said, yo, let me let me really listen to this shit and have an open mind and try to make a beat out of it. So I chopped some of one of his songs up. One of his songs is called 93 to Infinity and Beyonce. I don't know what that means. <laughs> it means something to him, though. <laughs> yeah, it means something to him. It may be. Shout out to Erica Badu. Shout to Erica Badu, man. Yeah, yeah. Got these dudes. <laughs> Mine's strange, going. Boy, like, I know some people call it strange. That is that strange right there, boy. That <laughs> shit will change <laughs> your life. Word. Got that dang, dang. <laughs> mm. So, yeah, he going to get some crazy sample royalties, but. I uploaded to YouTube and it said it was clear, so okay. this one was good to go. So, so check this shit out. I actually used a uh, snippet of him. He was talking about like what he's doing now with the music, and then the beat just comes in. I'm gonna go grab the alcohol real quick. Okay. All right. So I call this one three stacks till infinity. Understand, like I, I love rap music because it was a part of my youth. So I, I would love to be out here rapping with everybody rapping because it's almost like fun to being on the playground playing. Like I would love to be out here playing with everybody, but it's like it's just not happening for me. So this is the realest thing that's coming right now, right now, right now. This is the realest thing that's coming. Thanks, bro. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna listen to some more tracks. See if I can get you know try to make some more of the beats while the copyright still I'm free. This man, like you know, I'm appreciative of the relationship that me and you have. Cheers, right? cheers to the chat room. I mean, like a lot of people, you know, it's like it's it's we just real OGs that kick it the proper way. You know what I'm saying? But like when we first linked up, man, you know, I was just like, yo. Your grind showing me my grind got holes in it. <laughs> you know nah, bro, you be grinding too, bro. But, but yo, and I'm just saying, so it's like even on the production shit, man, I was not like, I was not peeling off time to start making beats again. You know mm. what I'm saying? And like you, you helped me realize, yo, I, I got to find at least make a beat. You know, like if you don't make a beat every day, make a beat from time to time, or at least make a beat for a project. Like every time I talk to you, you got a project. That like that's why I would say you're good for the culture because you know you live the culture. It's important. You know, like we all DJ, we all love this, but like you know, like 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 I don't know how to describe it, man. But some like you have to win, right? Like like you know, at least from 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 where I sit, you have to win. There's DJs that are out here, and this ain't about DJing. This is about the culture. You know what I'm saying? Like, you you need to be able to, you know, cross over into the marketplace and show people. Like when we're talking about rapping, rapping is is linear now because folks believe talking about drugs and killing is the only way they can get out, right? Mm -hmm. me like you're someone that needs to also win so people can see like for djs or whatever you can be you can hold fast to your conviction that i'm not going to play mumble rap that i'm not going to play this bullshit that i'm going to stand for something you know what i'm saying and 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 you won that way i think that's what's important here so like like i know you know i mean like my with myself yeah I'm, i'm you know, yeah, I want to win too, but but to me, it, it's not about it's 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 uh, we're not competing. Facts. You know, Facts. like if you you know, I if I win, I'm bringing you with me. If you win, I believe you ain't gonna leave me at the bus station. You know what Facts. I'm saying? But the, but the reality is, you know, like I can't sit here and act like you know you hadn't carried the torch longer than me. You have, so you need to win. People need to get behind that. And then, you know, there's a conglomerate of folks that are all, we all know each other. But, um, you know what? I appreciate everything you said, bro. And to me, that, that touched on like a, another point. Like, no one man is an iron. Like, you need people next to you, in front of you, on the side of you, with the same mindset to help you. You know, see that too. Because sometimes we don't see that in ourselves. You know, <clears throat> Tigers just tell me that all the time. Like she's like, I'm not trying to down. You know what you did before, but you know, you DJing these hole in the walls and promoters jerking you. You're better than that. You shouldn't. You shouldn't be, um, just you know, just taking anything because of you know you have a talent. You know and. My, my brother-in-law told me, he told me one thing. He was like, yo, don't go chasing those, the like the people that want you to party. He goes, they need you. They will, they will, they will, you know, find you and book you. Like what he means, like don't go chasing it. And then they, you know, oh man, he's desperate. So let me just give him anything, you know? <clears throat> Like know your value, know your worth. You know. I mean, you had that conversation. Cause you know, I don't do. I hardly do gigs. Yeah. I don't either. Do yeah. Anymore. I, mm-hmm. And we even talk about. It. I have a controller price, mm-hmm. and I have a razzle dazzle price. Right. Right. You know, I mean, it, it is what it is. If you want a mm-hmm. razzle dazzle, and you're willing to pay for it, mm-hmm. then I'll haul all this shit over there, and I will put the razzle dazzle on your ass. Right. But, but mm-hmm. if you're not, if you're not, you know, you just want me to come out there and give you playlist, dude. It ain't really worth my time no more. You know what right. I'm saying? Like, so it is what it is. I'm not trying, yeah. you know, if if you want a real DJ, then it's a real DJ price. Word. Yo, I want to shout out Vintage Vibes. So I, why, as you were saying that, man, Vintage Vibe Music Group just became a sponsor on YouTube. That's 
part of the Jay Diller Foundation that used to come. They come through on Twitch. Nice. And yo, big salute, man. Big salute. Word. And J one, don't chase a dollar. Let it chase you. Word. Word. Hey, Word. I, I said it before. I mean, like you, you got to be a benchmark for something. You know what I'm saying? But it, it's a lot of folks. Here's what we understand. They're going to be DJs that are going to sell out. <laughs> right. Right. If you're going to sell out and play that mumble rap stuff, man. Uh, you know, it is what it is. But it is what it is. Yeah. There's so much quality stuff out there. The experience is different. It's like Beats and Bourbon. Beats and Bourbon, man. When I like, I listen to the, the sets from Beats and Bourbon, man, and everyone is talking about, we're playing all this great music that has been here for years and people overlook. Yeah. Yep. Oh, look, I love it. I love it. Yeah, I love Beats and Bourbon, man. I mean, they, but hey, they go DJ Cutter, Beats and Bourbon. You Beats and Bourbon. Me, J1 Son. J1 Son, come back. Come back. Beats and Bourbon. <laughs> J1 Son, kill the Beats and Bourbon set. So, I mean, it, it's like. I want to play the obvious. Well, I, I was about to say, that's the difference from a DJ that know that has music knowledge and knows crazy and actually plays music than a, a playlist DJ. And I mean, not just playing a playlist, but he's doing the top 40 shit. He can't do or she can't do Beats and Burr. Right. Because that's not, that's not what Beats they and They ain't digging into the breaks. They ain't digging into the oh, B-side of Stephanie Mills joint that wasn't played on a radio more than that Put Your Body in maybe was played. You know what I mean? Or yeah, yeah, Shaka sure. Khan joint. Like, like just that. Yeah, man, that, that shit you, even like shit you didn't know. Like that's what's dope about like, like like selector for instance. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He'll play some joint that, oh shoot, like you say you forgot about it or oh damn I ain't know about this one. Yeah. Still sharp yeah. and still, you know. Well, it, man, so it's like we all hear music different, right? Mm-hmm. So let's say like you might have listened to an album in the, the let's say in the early nineties, whatever. Let's say somebody like uh, what's my man. Uh, sends a song. I want to start love over. I can't think of his damn name. Anyway, regardless, it's an eighty song. You get you had the album, and you're um, you, you just skip through a couple of tracks. Whereas, let's say you know, so I play a track that you hadn't heard before, but you heard the album. You just never heard that track. Yep. To me, the track was dope, and now I'm playing the track, and you say, oh, shit, that track is dope. I never even, you know, I skipped over that for this. You know, that's Boy. going back to the AI thing and the thing about having the DJs that, you know, break records, you, you know, you get exposed to better music. There's better music from a DJ that is not a top 40 DJ. You know what I'm saying? Right. Somebody is doing a, a set, like let's say, like uh, what J1 was saying. You know, you know, you enjoy the music that you're playing because you you're you're playing bangers that you like. That's one thing about Twitch. Nobody's telling you're not taking a gig where a guy says, "Okay, I want you to play this, this, and this." Right. You're saying, you know what? I'm gonna play this because this is what I want to hear. Me and you already, we don't do curated sets. So when we go live, we don't know what the hell we're going to play unless it's a theme raid or something like that. I just let that vibe just take you. Just let it take you, man. And it, yo, I tell you, man, it feels like, I, I think I said this before, like almost like now a ball player, how they get in the zone and the rim gets bigger, where they can't miss. Like mm-hmm. that's what it feels mm-hmm. like. Like when I'm like, sometimes I, if I'm, Playing something, then it's like I don't even be like, okay, I can play this one with this next one. Now nah, I just look through the folder. It's like, all right, then I'm just playing it. Then all of a sudden, I'll just be like, oh, maybe if I pull the vocals out, throw another beat behind this, bring something else in, and it just all of a sudden it just starts like stitching. It's like mm-hmm. a puzzle. It's mm-hmm. like boom, 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 and it's like then all of a sudden you just in a zone, and it just you just go. You know what I mean? But like I said, that's it's the feel for the music because it's a feeling behind it, man. It, it's it. That's why I said we we don't sound like the old haters because this music today, there's no feeling to it. This shit is created today. It's gone tomorrow for the the next new song that comes out. It's no longer got a thousand streaming services. 
You have a million rappers. You have a million DJs. Everybody is not putting out good music. The more stuff is out there, the more you got to weed through to get to the good shit. And fortunately, there's a lot of mediocre shit out there because anybody can press record and say I'm a rapper or press pray and say I'm a DJ. It's just what it is. I'm smiling because when you said that, I'm thinking about some of that some of that shit the little fever sends us. That William, all that William Shatner shit. I'm like, oh my god, this dude, man, what the hell? Bones, <laughs> William Shatner, pain you be? You get Bones, what are, what are, what are we gonna mix today? Spock, <laughs> go hit the lever. Where's the green bitch at? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, dude, crazy man. Shouts to yeah, shouts to little fever. That dude is wild. Oh man, he embraces yeah. it too. <laughs> yeah, but, but like, but so my, you're right though. I mean, I, I think that's you know the, you said it, man. What was, what was the thing you used to say about a DJ, man? A, a, a good DJ plays music, and a great DJ plays music. You didn't know you wanted to hear. What was yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. And, well, and that's most true. And to me, I think that's the difference. That is the difference between a J One Son or Full Blast Radio or Reboot Radio, the Brown Hornet, DJ Tiger, whatever. That that we're cut from that cloth. You listen to our set because yeah, it may not be prearranged, but you're probably gonna hear something you hadn't heard from in a, in a while, or you 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 know are glad you're here to hear for the first time. Right. You know, so like the Underground Railroad. You know, I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm great for that. You know, I mean, yeah, we can go ahead. And I, I didn't mean to cut you off, but you good? You know, yeah, I want to um, <laughs> you know. Love the love the rave, love the rave. Um, I just want to like like go into the new year and you know, you know, just make sure everyone's on the same page as far as like yo, just the underground railroad. Let's, you know, it's dope to blend stuff. Like I, I'm the last person trying to tell somebody how to DJ, but what I'm saying is for the underground railroad, let's, you know, maybe not play Biggie Juicy. Or play not that a DJ played it. I'm just saying, like, just thinking of mindset, kind of like you know, if we weren't doing a house raid train, you know, don't play, uh, you know, elevated music. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Or don't play <laughs> opera. <laughs> you know. <laughs> 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 I'm just saying, oh, you know, like hey, Tiger, Tiger. I was like, I don't know whether I should be offended. I'm like, I'm looking at my calendar. I never heard any of this shit before. I don't know what the hell this is. I'm like, what the hell? What is this? I'm like, oh. I'm like, am I learning something here? Or yeah, we all learned something that day. Yeah, that shit was wild, man. Oh, I was man. like. What the fuck is he playing? Mm, mm. Anyway, that's an inside joke between me and the homie right there. Yeah, yeah we'll keep like, it that way. No, Not everything that way. belong on the internet. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, yo, I, I, I don't, I'm like, listen, I've never heard this shit before in my life. I don't know what to Yeah, it's hilarious. You know, I, I'm with you. You know, like, like I said, I, I actually rock. There was a minute there when the Underground Railroad started where I actually was telling. I was, I think I might have been on Instagram telling these folks, man, you send me new me. Cause I, I do a segment on my station on Fridays called um it's called Doing It for the Culture. Right. That's dope, man. Yeah. So, I, I need to incorporate something like that. Like somebody got to run it though. I'm I'm too busy. <laughs> <laughs> well, so you know, so I I I you know, granted, it is you're right, it's a labor of love. But for two hours, I rock underground shit that people are sent to the station. That's dope. Like, let me tell you what pisses me off, Tiger. I don't know about you. This now, this is a radio station talk, Ken. All this right. pisses me off when I got people sending me music to the sending me mumble shit to the station, right? I'm like, nigga, have you listened to the station? I ain't playing no mumble rap, bro. That's what kills me. Yeah, why would you send me this? I'm not gonna play this shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, dude, you wasting your time and my time. To listen to this topic. That's what kills me. Like you know what I'm playing. Oh, you just don't get you just think your shit is so dope. I'm supposed yo, that's the ego of some of these <laughs> ones that suck. They have an ego like, yo, you gotta play my joint. You supposed to play it. 
Yeah, nah. It, Those it, ones, I really get a red flag because it's like 99.9% of the time, they shit suck. Yeah, exactly. So, nah, J1, of course it wasn't you. It was an inside. It was, a matter of fact, it ain't even this raid. It was another raid. Yeah, it was different. Yeah. yeah. Come on, J1. Yeah. It was <laughs> Come on, bro. Yeah, it was another raid that, that you know, we, we had, me and him flip flop. We got about 20 raids between us. Some of them stuck, some of them didn't. Yeah. But at any rate, nah, so now nah, it wasn't. Come on, family. See, I mean, you you playing music and I'm taking I'm taking notes, man. Don't do that. Word. Bro, that, that, that rock set he did, I still, I won. I'm so mad I didn't get to post that because I had recorded most of it. I want to put that on YouTube, but I don't know if I should put on it now with all this regulations going. On, but man, Yo, that well, rock said he did, bro. Yo, J One, since I'm, I've been drinking a little bit and I'm feeling kind of good, I'm just going to put it out there, man. Yo, when you left the group chat, man, I, you, I, I, like a little tear came down my eye. Man. <laughs> little, little Indian, he was like the Indian, Indian with the garbage when you saw it on the street. Litter. You remember the commercial with the Indian, the Indians with the yeah. litter and no litter, and they were walking on the sidewalk, went on the street, and the little tear came out of his eye. <laughs> like, no. the group chat, I was, was like, like oh, man, where you going? Like we in the phone. Where you going? Don't let me be suburban, man. Come on, brother. But anyway, I mean, it's all good. But but yeah, so nah, I am. I, um, <laughs> Wise <on> TV. TV. <laughs> no, so if you don't know Wise, Wise is day one from the from the tribe from YouTube days. And anytime I play like some mob deep or some real shit that gets you amped, he be talking about man, I'm about to head to the project roof and start throwing TVs. I might hit a couple of grandmothers <laughs> on the way down. Hit <laughs> a couple of grandmothers. So he's talking about throwing TVs and refrigerators at people. Yeah, oh, nah. man. But, but I agree with that. I completely agree. It's the underground railroad, man. So like, yeah. like what I like about it is, and I don't know how you're gonna reel that in, man. While we having a candid conversation, because you got some folks that just don't give a fuck to play whatever they want, and I understand that too. Because that's the that's the out of coming to Twitch is it's your stream, right? right? So I, I understand that, but you know, like yo, I just don't want to get out of hand. Like you play so, one, I hear one joint, oh whatever. But then it's like, then I'm starting to hear R and B for like twenty minutes. It's like, so, well, I'm about to say. I, here's the funny part is, and I don't think we're talking about a, we may maybe talk about the same person, or whatever. But if we ain't. That person got access to underground music fresh off the presses. So that's the weird dynamic about it to me. No, nah, maybe maybe somebody different. Okay, yeah. then that's fine yeah. too. But but like I, I know we all have access. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I like I, I you know, I, I don't think it's a question about can you provide do a set of underground music. I think the second, right. do you, what are you feeling today? Like, like how we're saying we feel, um, <laughs> okay, look good. Yeah. We'll get in. Yeah, it's him, yeah. I got you. So, <laughs> so like, I, I think that, um, Caliente, thank you for the, uh, he told me Chief 17, Eagle 7 at halftime. Yeah, okay. I like to see the Eagles lose. Them fuck the Eagles. Right. But, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but, but anyway, um, so yeah, I, I think we we what we're talking about is do you wanna you know reach in the crates and pull stuff out now now I say everybody there's no question about do we know underground. Like let's say like um uh, J one, Chief Chief One, that's another one. Here's <laughs> something that bothers me about Twitch, right? I know. Go ahead. I know you're gonna say, <clears throat> you, like, people don't understand who who the hell they listening to. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, oh. I'm sitting in cheap <clears throat> one sets. Like, God damn, he's <clears throat> murdering it, man. And there's like 15 people in here, man. You gotta be kidding me. That's one dude. You be playing. He be playing shit. You be like, oh damn, I forgot about that joint. Oh, Always, I, every I time. You on a walking mixtape. Yup. Walking mixtape. Yo, he was playing. Um, he had like ninety three mixtape. He's playing mm -hmm. like all. He he must have did a mixtape with like all shit from ninety three. Mm -hmm. Bro, it was hours and hours of just dope hip hop from ninety three. From just artists from 
everybody you can name and, and people you forgot about. So, so B side shit. Word. And like, so from my perspective, like, I'm never going to hate on a DJ that is doing, you know, like, like, is carrying the culture like he should. You know? Facts. So, I mean, what that's what irritates, like, when you, when you say you are, <clears throat> ah, man, let me step back up out of that shit because I ain't trying to go to war yet. But, <laughs> but it's like, you know, we, we, what are we doing here? You know, like, we, we real hip hop heads, then you got deep, real hip hop DJs out there doing real hip hop shit. Are you listening? Are right, you, right. Or are you on that channel because you're in there for the chat? Yeah. Yeah. Shouts to Miss right. K is it in the building? That's one. Miss K is oh. it? Yes, ma'am. Hey, Miss K is it owes me a refund, y'all. Everybody type refund in the chat on refund. Right. Right. Well, well, let me wait and see what she said because <laughs> 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 I don't want it if I tape it. She owes me twenty dollars. I want my twenty dollars. Twenty dollars. She owes me twenty dollars. <laughs> yeah. So Daryl Felder, exactly. I mean, like, let's be honest. Like, so, I mean, like, that Underground Railroad, it, I mean, there's some monsters on that raid. Pharaoh, salute! Shouts to Pharaoh, salute. Monsters on the Monster DJ, JC, J1. Word. Two, um, um, Chief One, mm -hmm. you know, Opal 1200, J Tech. <laughs> You know, um, Phil Skills. I mean, Mighty Mai. Mighty Mai. So lineup is crazy, man. You know, I mean, I, I'm just in that mm -hmm. motherfucker trying to just keep, I'm in there trying to doggy pack. You know what <laughs> I mean? But, but it is no. what it is. So, like, like that that part to me, how many times you want to hear Jenna Juice be? How many times yeah. you want to hear, you know, like you got to start asking yourself when you start asking yourself that. That's the problem I have with these old school rap stations. Where they're playing the shit we we done heard like all the time. Like, yo, play <laughs> Murder is the case. Yeah. You know what I'm play Doggy Dog World. Well, Don't I, play I, What's I, My Name or Gin and Juice or nothing but a G thing. Like no, come on, I guess, man. I would say they probably got young program directors though. Yeah. You feel no, like no, they do. They just they just play they play the singles. Of the classic album, ah, that's what you're saying. saying. Yeah, yeah. They don't even, they don't even scroll, they don't even go through the. They don't even have like a playlist. Right. They make a playlist of like it's a, just a plain top, the obvious. Top, yeah, they go like let's say ninety three. What was ninety ninety seven? Top forty. Yeah, classic rap, and then they run that. It ain't like hard that. to tell. Protect your neck. Yeah, you know what I mean. Which yeah, yeah go. I mean, if we was in a spot and we heard that. Come on, we're gonna be like, oh shoot, but as a DJ as a radio station. Come on, let's 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 dig a little deeper. Let's let's make it like, oh shoot, he played that joint. Cause that's the feeling I get when I hear y'all play the joint. Because it was me buying the album, sitting in my car, putting the cassette in the deck, or being at home, putting it in my stereo system, listening to side B of, you know what I mean, of, you know, Nordy's album or Brand Nubian, then y'all play a B side of that, it's like, oh, shoot, he got the same feeling I had when I was by myself listening to it. So, so and Tiger, that shit connects everybody when that shit happens, bro. Here's the funny part, though, Tiger. I don't, most of, like, these young guys don't know what a B side is. <sighs> they don't know what a B side is. I mean, who's, like, like, they're not in, like, the the idea of like digital some not so young too, bro. The <laughs> <laughs> something not so young too that don't really be well, but yeah, well, okay, like correction. That shit. correction. Now you're talking about how long you've been DJing because if you haven't going in the you haven't going in the record store and buying twelve inches, you don't know what a B side is, you know. So right. you're, like, you're a dude that came in the game and you know you've been digital, you know, buying music yeah. digitally. You just, you don't know what a B-side is. So, yeah, because yeah. you missed the ones that didn't make the album or well, yeah, not streaming. And, and let's be candid, man. There's a lot of times those are the doper tracks. I know. A lot of times it was a doper track. Plus, the other thing was you got the acapella. 
a lot of acapellas was on the other side. You got yes. the, so you had the track, but now you not got stemmed like, either, real ones. Yeah, yeah. So you know, I mean, there's a lot of things that came with the with the B side of or, or the back side of the album or the record was you know now you might have had the Roxanne Roxanne double pella. You might have had you know whatever, which that was my shit. I love to play that at the party with the right. double pella, you know. But anyway, um, yeah. So I mean, it, it's. You know, Why, know. vet? Thank you for the gift of self. The Miss K is it. Why I say it like that because that's how I type you know. it. Why, vet George? You know, in the building. Salute. Still Why celebrating her born day. Still celebrating her birthday. That's right. Oh. With that giggle in your big head. I hear you giggling. <laughs> giggling right now. Right. <laughs> but yeah, man. Shouts to all my mods, man. Word. Miss K is Definitely, it. man. She that's family dollars. right there. See, that's what's dope, man. Like you said, like, you know, our connection, because our mods, your mods, it's like we all got the same mods, like, and we're all, and even if we don't, we're still, it's like we all still one. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We're all still yeah. family. This is how I'm trying to get you on Friday to raid you before you raid me. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> You see how I fixed that? You see how I fixed that Saturday, though, right? The last yeah. Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> like, this guy got me. Like, Ghost. And he was like, yeah. He's like, I don't get it, because you did say that earlier. I was like, this motherfucker got me. Yeah. I was like, okay, homie, I'm Ghost. Yeah, I ain't streaming this evening, bro. Yeah, I'm going to make sure. Got him. I'm make sure Cutter came your way, too. I like, Cutter, look at we going to full blast. I know he ain't on the schedule, but we going, we going to full blast. Word. It was all love, too. Always, always, word, dope, yeah. dope. We old enough to know better, right? And we, you know, and we, you know, if they don't know in the chat, like you know, me, me and you are on, you know, damn near every ray train that we created because we both took it upon ourselves to be like, you know, whether there's gatekeepers on Twitch and us not maybe getting, you know, some more light. We figured, hey, let's just start our own. I saw the fork in the road and I went straight. You know what I mean? So sure. that's why the connection is dope too, because we, you know, we behind the scenes, we talk about stuff, we 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 think alike on what we gotta do to further, you know, our skills and further the culture and Miss Cooley. That's, yeah, that's Miss Cooley's. That's her. Fuck them hoes. Yeah. <laughs> that's her phrase all the time. Yeah. When I tell her something in the chat, fuck them hoes. <laughs> oh, shit. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's the, you know, no one's no one's going to um sit there and listen to you. You sit around and complain all day. You guys yeah, take initiative and do it, you know? We, and, we, yeah, exactly. I said we, we're old yeah. enough, man, we know better. Yeah, but we ain't waiting on somebody else to, you know. We, ain't, you know, like yo, we we believe in our skills, we believe in what we do, and I mean, it is what it is. And I think the other thing is we can have candid conversations. We ain't, we ain't on some old prima donna emotional bullshit. Yeah, you know, I know I can hit Tiger up, man. Tiger said, "Yo, that shit's whack, man. Don't do." That. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know. I like, why? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I know what you mean. Like, yo, maybe we should do this. Maybe, yeah, yeah. But yeah, man. But that's that's just what it is, cause you know, I mean, come on, man. We we've been doing this so long too. Like we were saying, like our lives with the DJ it was like parallel. Like mm-hmm. what you was doing, what I was doing, and we was like kind of having like the same type of stories. We was like, oh shoot, mm-hmm. yo, that happened to you, yo. That same thing happened to me when I did this and mm-hmm. carrying crates and mm-hmm. the radio stations. Like yo, it's great. That's how I say your brother from another. Whenever I come, he come in the chat, you know, because mm-hmm. that's real shit. Real shit, man. Word up. Word. <clears throat> so, it's just dope, man. I appreciate, you know, people tuning in on our first show, you know. We got people on YouTube. We got people on Twitch. And, man, so, uh, what, what do y'all feel about the show, man? Chat room, man. I, I can't see YouTube, but Twitch, what do you think so far, man? Where we at? We making mm-hmm. the cut? Y'all coming mm-hmm. back? You going to tell somebody? You going to bring somebody in the headlock? Yeah. <laughs> Definitely, we'll have some uh, some people on next week. They want to uh, join in. Oh, wow. Big shout out to Caliente Hemp with the $10 donation. He said, back in the 80s, few DJs, club, house, party, college. Now, one million DJs because of YouTube platform, Twix and Mitch Cloud. Everyone wants to be a DJ. Facts. 
Yeah. Let me tell you what's funny about that. So Caliente Hemp, um, I would say this. Even the, 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 when you go and you look at some of the DJs with the clips with all the fucking button shit going on and all of the other stuff, like they're not even playing music. It's like a playlist of somebody else. Like that's the other part of DJing that is in jeopardy to me. And I say it's in jeopardy because you've got folks that are already established at a higher level that really don't give a shit right now. They're still getting their checks. They better be mindful that if we don't call out that bullshit, that bullshit may end up cutting into your pocket. Mm. Right? And I'm not naming no names because, damn, they're they some bad dudes. Yeah. But the point is that when you, oh, I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with mashing buttons. I have a problem. Guess what? You know, when that damn fucker mashing that button and he sounded like you, and he's about $10,000 less than you, you might be at the house. <laughs> yeah. so appreciate, you know, I know you're at the, the, the tier of the skill level, but that don't mean that they can't come for you either and hurt your wallet, my friend. Yeah. So, and, yeah. And, and yeah, and not even like, and I know what you're talking about. And it's like, no comments, like, remember I took it one way, and then when you explained it, I was like, damn, you know, I didn't even think of it that way because I'm thinking of who he is. Mm-hmm. And we said that, but then when you said that, I was like, yeah, because some DJs that went wrong like that might take that the wrong way. Like, bro, like, why would you? And you came up doing the battle with the vinyl, and you see, like, who cares? Now, the only thing, like I said, was, you know, maybe he's talking about doing those, those festivals where, you know, there's a million people and they don't know what you're doing. Yeah, I get that. But to me, if I know that I'm doing that and I know that, damn, I this is not how I was brought up doing it. I don't care if the people don't know if I'm doing that or not. I, I want to do it the right way. So when you like so like I said, when you explained it, that that's that's what made me say that to myself. Like, well, damn, even if they don't know that I'm using a sync button. I don't want to use the button. I'm still, like, I can easily, yeah, let me bring the song in, but, bro, there's a, a feeling of you bringing the records in and out. It's you doing it. It ain't the computer. Yeah, the computer's already helping it up by storing all the music. Yeah. But well, damn, I mean, we must get a robot to sit here like they trying to do now. That's what I'm saying. You can hear when I fuck up. <laughs> without the sync button you never hear it yeah. but, but but the other problem is because if you fuck up you can go back and make it better yeah well you can't you can't grow you if can't you're yeah. not making mistakes you can't grow you know so I, I i like that's the issue there is that that whoever's using the sync button is going to be garbage always because they never had to grow they right. never had to grow it's like when i first when i came down to atlanta and well we ain't gonna call that mm-hmm. atlanta when I came down to Georgia, mm-hmm. came to <laughs> right, and the sticks. <laughs> yeah, we came down to Georgia. You had that CDJ. Like, like I grew up on vinyl. I grew up on turntables. I can play on anything. It may take me a minute to right. get my bearings, but I can play on anything. When you come up on a sync button, you can't play on jack. <clears throat> you can't like, like I mean, like when you came, you've been to my house. When you came in the studio, we came up in here, man. Never going to be a problem. Like we both was going to get busy, and we knew it. Even like when Chops and DJ Eaton, when Eaton came up, the only thing I could say was when I never seen a setup like Eaton's before. Yeah, you know I mean? but I mean, with that being said, like he, he knew he knew what he was doing, and we know he was going to going to get it in. Right. Mm-hmm. You you don't do yourself a, a service when you do that. You do yourself a disservice. Right. But like. Like I said, like, and I stand by what I said, you may be the draw right now, but if you don't speak out against folks that are putting out these, you know, selling, I don't know what you want to call it, but it's fake DJing, then please don't, don't think a promoter won't, you know, we've been in this business, you know, a promoter will do whatever they can get away with. Yeah. So if they can have Coachella with whack-ass DJs that's pump faking, guess what? 
and give them a hundred dollars in a bottle, they'll do Damn it. Right, that's exactly what they'll do. So don't think that it won't happen to you because you were one of the you know you mm-hmm. helped shape it. You can get bit too. So like some of that, when I listen to some of that shit, I wonder if they you know how much you how much sponsorship are you getting. Because like so, and you know, like I won't go into. Oh, that, okay. Like, there's the other part of it. Go ahead. There's another yeah, That's what I'm saying. In my other life, mm-hmm. right? I know about shit like this. Like sometimes you don't speak out against some things because you already don't receive favors. You've already gotten so and so. You've been taken care. You don't want to rock the boat. Yeah. So you don't want to rock the boat, man. We talked about mm-hmm. this before. You don't want to bite the hand that's feeding you. Yeah. So you don't say shit. Yeah, well, even, or, if the, even if whoever's feeding you is detrimental to the culture. Yeah, you know, it's detrimental because you don't care at this point. You don't care about that. You got to pay for that damn house and, you know, the other stuff. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Shouts to DJ C Mac. One of, I mean, one of the first dudes that I, I ever met on Twitch. And I mean, when you talk about solid and good people, C Mac is, is, mm-hmm. is a super cool dude. C Mac, salute. Man, I, I don't know about his golf swing. I heard it's kind of hit you, you know, kind of Charles Barkley like. But you know, I, <laughs> we'll leave it. We'll leave it there. Yeah, he kind of got a freeze in it. But you know, I'm joking. I'm joking. Anyway, get us yeah. Here, People using Chat GBT to compose lyrics and sync, syncing with musical instruments. Yeah. Oh yeah. Now yeah. you know we like like you said the the DOC joint. That's dope. What they're doing, you know. Um, There's going to be a bunch of lawsuits. This is going to be like it's going to be a little while, but it's going to be a bunch of lawsuits. Like you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna see like Biggie's estate suing somebody for verses that Biggie never said that they ate the people eating off. You know, like it's gonna be it's gonna get. Who wants to do that, bro? Mm-hmm. He's like, because I didn't make no songs with Big, so I want to do some AI or Big, and people are like, how you know Big would have said that? It's like, not Biggie. Yeah, it's it not Biggie. It is, and I'm like, yo, he he's the dude that let Justin Timberlake get off that that Prince disc. So I ain't surprised anyway. Mm-hmm. And I still ain't letting that shit go. Mm-hmm. No, nah, the, the, the one for me. A lot of people didn't know about that, bro. Yeah, my thing is the titty. <laughs> oh no! Oh, that was the first thing. You titty already know. Titty gave the problem for me. Yeah, he left Jan out in the dust. Meanwhile, he oh, I didn't know what was going yeah, on. Yeah, oh, I'm innocent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even know about that. Yeah. Yeah, I man. I, felt it. I had to put I had to put black electrical tape on my big toe, the one I'm trying to get surgery on. <laughs> I played golf with that. I felt it. I wanted to tape my shit up to finish the round. <laughs> Feet are raggedy, raggedy foot DJ. Oh man. Shouts to Dow Felder though, man. You need to come back and we we can go out on this course and have a good time, man. Cool people, man. Cool. That's people. what's up. Yeah, that was dope. Yeah. I saw the pictures. Yeah. yeah. Word up. So yeah, y'all, y'all know tomorrow it goes down. Your version will sound like this. Volume what? 97? 97. Oh, so check Wait, it, man. Why are we talking about that, man? I'm going to do a whole week long your version for, to celebrate the 100th episode. That's going to be dope. So I've got a, a, a spreadsheet that I'm going to start hitting DJs up with. I'm going to be on every day. Fuck that. Hey, yeah, I'm good with that. I'm doing Monday. I ain't even doing Tuesday. We talk about I'll be right. down on Tuesday. So, but, mm-hmm. but I'm going to reach out because, you know, there's a lot of DJs on Twitch that reached out to me. And, like, I never, I don't have a slot. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Your mods. <laughs> What's going on? Your mods. <laughs> They're talking about you doing it all week. <laughs> troublemaker, right? Miss Kansas is a troublemaker, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I want my twenty dollars, Miss K. Is it? I want my twenty dollars. Sure. Twenty dollars. Pay me and pay the doctor bill. Hmm. Pick a choice. Pick a choice. <laughs> but it, <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So like, I'm, I'm gonna be spreading out the the uh, spreadsheet. I'm gonna send out the spreadsheet, but it's gonna be a week long raid to celebrate 100 episodes <clears throat> of your version, man. Dope. 100. Dope. That's crazy, man. Hey. I want to do the fly, bro. Okay. I do the fly. Come on, man. Hey, you didn't please. I appreciate it. Yeah, no it. doubt. So, so we we we'll give that to you. Eaton might he might be hurt a little bit, but he'll be okay. He'll be all right. Yeah. He'll be all right. Yeah, he's a big boy. <laughs> so, so you gonna do the fly for like the Tuesday or for the whole thing? Because I'm like, I just do just do. Which one you want? Because like when I like what I'm gonna I, do is I don't know that I'm gonna do 
like it's a obviously it's a five day event. Right. You want a hundred episode, I meant. But for the hundred, okay, got that's yeah. what's up. So yeah, I, I'll split the rest between me and E. Okay. Yeah, because they're gonna be different DJs every day. No, Miss saying. Kids, it. Miss kids it. take a picture of your feet. You got ten toes. You about to be the short one. Tichenko, you said they wanted to make Sly a DJ. Who's Sly? Tichenko, that's someone on a, on a YouTube. Man, shouts to YouTube showing love, man, to the brother. Yeah. Man, Word up. Uh, Robert Gant, Power 800, my mods over there. Salute. Salute, y'all. Good to see y'all. Word. Now, obviously, y'all know Thursday, there's no uh, underground. We'll be chilling, watching football. Actually, it's going to be a, uh, about time for the first time in like 15 years to be a good Lions game on. <laughs> Shout out to Don Burr. Yeah, the Cowboys? I think the line, do the Lions play? I think the Cowboys play the Commanders. I forgot. They play the Commanders. You're right. Okay. Damn, man, I can't stand a damn Cowboy. All right, man, I hope the Commanders drag the floor. They need their ass with more. <laughs> yeah, I forgot what the Lions play, but the, the night game is, is going to be a real good game. I know Stub Rock knows knows who's who's uh playing. Stub, who the Lions playing, bro? I know he know because they we talked about. Oh, the Lions play the Packers. Okay. But that night game is gonna be a real good one, mm-hmm. and then we have the Black Friday game with the the, the uh, second part of the destruction of the New York Jets as they play the Dolphins. <laughs> Bro, I'm sorry, I swear to God, it took them ten games to find out they need to bench Zach Wilson. Trash Yo, I'm still like I still like Salah, man. That's my dude. He come from the Niners. I like him too, man. But yo, they he act too nice, bro. Like, come on, man. You do it as garbage. I know y'all can't throw him on the bus in the media, but y'all gotta find ways to word that that dude is not it. He's not it, bro. And they just cause he's a draft pick, it's like they don't wanna um put it out there. You know what I mean? Because yeah, you see what we did. We shipped Lance ass off. Yeah. Ass. That cat I I, I he's still exactly. paying on the locker spot. Exactly. Who is not even a quarterback, bro? Running around there with a di- like a Dan headlights. Mm-hmm. Crazy, but yeah, let's not get into football because Miss Cooley will leave. <laughs> What's up, my Andrea? Shout out to my Andrea. Soul Tech in the building. Text me your Dennis, your Dennis phone number, Miss Cooley. <laughs> word up, word up. So yeah, man. Anything else, man? Before we uh, get up out of here, I, just, I didn't know it was ten o'clock already. Man. Yeah, so that's I, dope, man. We're just chopping it up. Hungry as hell. Yo, so anybody out here, I'm going to just keep it a buck, man. Anybody out here that's connected to any type of industry, man, and want to support minority business, holler at Full Blast and Reboot Radio. Man. Word up. We we got plans. Y'all be y'all watch. It's a big got sponsorship packages, all that. All that. Holler yeah. at us. Yeah. Yes, indeed. So I'm going to put the, uh, <clears throat> we get out of here. I'm going to put the link to the um, to band camp for the stream for the uh, yeah. So our, hey, our joint mixtape, joint mixtape is out. Get that in your life, man. And let me that's tell the, you, that's the link right there. It's free. Most it is free. called the Animal Kingdom Volume One. Bring the pain blends and remixes. Um, we just dropped that for for your holiday week. You could um, relax, chill out, listen to these dope blends by my brother and myself. Likewise, word. This is the, uh, can't find the cover, but I was going to put the cover up. And um, yeah, yeah, definitely support, man. Support these radio station, Reboot Radio, Full Blast Radio. You know what I'm saying? Download the apps, all that good stuff. Dope, man. Shouts to Full Blast Radio on the tide, on the fly. That's the homie right there. Thanks, brother. Yeah, that shit is nice. Word, man. Got to bring the pain, man. We got to bring it. (laughs) Yeah. So So Twitch.tv, man, before we go, and I know we're about to bounce, everybody that's on that Twitch.tv, do me a favor. Hit the at symbol, then... Scroll through, put in the M, and when you see Miss K is it, click on that and say, give Rebooters $20. (laughs) 
Oh man. So <laughs> man, that's the family right there, man. She's awesome, man. <laughs> you gonna, get, me. <laughs> gonna get you, man. She's gonna get you. We're gonna go to the homie Wall G, man. Straight out of Chicago Shot Town on Twitch. Where everybody else will have a wonderful Miss K said block your screen right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Big shout out to the tribe. Big shout out to the boot family. Word. Appreciate Much love, y'all. Dude. We appreciate y'all tuning in. We'll be back at it next Monday. Word up. Eight o'clock. We uh we got some guest DJs on too, man. Chop it up with us. Word. Word. We need to we need to holler at J One, man, and, and uh you gonna try to get cello music. We'll talk about it off air. Yeah. yeah, no doubt. All right. All right, y'all. Peace.